Headlin held out the box and said, This is a third-rank middle-stage gold pill. A first-rate alchemist of the eighth rank of Xuan Yuan created it. It is of the highest quality. It will help Lord greatly increase his strength. It might even allow him to reach the ninth rank. John Mu thought about the fact that this pill is of incredible value. Its power is amazing. It's also of the highest quality. It even puts it on the same scale as a spirit stone. To offer something like this, Mr. Lin must be desperate. Liao Shun asked with a chuckle. Is it a golden pill? To poison masters, pills have no practical use. The man wanted to reply something, but the guy interrupted him, saying he was offering the following. If he could fulfill what he said next, he would not only cure his son, but also help him get rid of the man he had chosen. Head Lin replied that he was listening. The guy said it's very simple. He knows that the Lin family is quite influential in Xuanwu, so he wants them to establish a trading platform for their masters here. Lin Rotian grudgingly said that even though the Lin family might not be the last people in this kingdom, but he should be aware that they are not the ones ruling here. He is afraid that many people might express discontent if a trading platform is established. But Liao Shun asked who was he trying to fool? Didn't he poison the golden-tailed lion to become the kingdom's ruler? Let the latter not worry about it. If the latter agreed to cooperate, he could guarantee that even if the supreme beast had reached the ninth rank, it wouldn't be such a big problem for the poison hall. Head Lin asked in surprise, isn't that a problem? And he himself thought about the fact that when the lion had made the breakthrough, it had incredibly puzzled him. But now the one was speaking so confidently, it might be possible to realize the original plan. Moreover, Red Lotus City represents the largest trading platform, so why not secure a strong partner? But at the same time, don't mess up the relationship with the authorities. Lin Ruten hid the box about to reply, but then a servant came running shouting to the master that a terrible thing had happened. The one asked what was the matter. The boy replied that it had to do with the third elder. The head asked, what is this about? Was it not possible to capture the criminals? The servant said no. He was just brought back. He is badly wounded, unconscious now. The head asked what else. The servant added that someone had been particularly cruel to his lower body. Now the organ is completely non-functional. Ruoshan asked in surprise, who did this, who dared? He thought about the fact that first his son was beaten and thrown into the cesspool. Now the third elder had been mocked. Had their family suffered more humiliation? The servant said it was brought by people from the royal palace. It was said that the culprit tried to hide in the palace, but was tracked down by a search rat. Then there was a skirmish in which a third elder was injured. They also don't know anything about the guards. As for those responsible for what happened, it was all the work of Liu Cheng, and the culprit was one of his disciples. Lin Rochian clenched his fist angrily, saying that he dared to injure his son and the third elder. Absolute disrespect to the Lin family. He, Lin Rochian, would never forgive him. The head wanted to give an order, but another servant came running in to report that Chairman Liu Cheng and his disciple said that they had come here to finally sort things out, get justice, and make them apologize. The head asked angrily, apologizing. The one injured his men and demands an apology. He really does not put the Lin family in anything they do. Meanwhile, Zhang Huang stood outside, shouting to the head of the Lin family to come out and carry his apology. Otherwise, let him blame himself. The men nearby asked, Who is this, daring to raise such a ruckus here? Is he crazy or just sick? Another asked, What's going on anyway? Someone asked an elder what was going on. Another asked, What does it mean to take over? Those are two loud words. Lin Ruoshan thought about killing this insolent person. The head told Master Liao that he would need his help. The boy looked at him questioningly. A man said that his son and Prince Fei Xuan of Kungan Kingdom were injured and poisoned by Liu Cheng's disciple. He suspects that the man might be a master of poisons. Therefore, even though he is a rank 9 master, but it is difficult for him to confront the poison master, he hopes that the latter can help with this. But the guy waved his hand, saying that if the guy was a poison master, he'd know about it. It was probably just some imposter that had learned a couple tricks. As long as that one stuck to their arrangement, let him leave such insects to him. Roshan thought about the fact that he didn't know anything about poisons, so this could have been a big problem for him. But now that he had such an ally, he had nothing to worry about. The man thanked the man for his help. The head went outside shouting that they would meet them whoever they were. An hour ago, Zhang was in the library, said that he still hadn't finished the medicine and alchemy books. It would take a little more time, and then he would be able to use the golden page. He thought about the fact that he should help Lu Chun for now. He told the guy he was listening to him now. Lu Chong said that in fact his name is not Lu Chong, but Chu Chong. He is a young master of the Chu family from Tianwu. Mo Yu asked shocked. What about the Chu family? 
the one that two years ago was completely wiped out in one night. And the king asked surprised that someone had survived after all. The guy said yes, he survived. Zhang asked the king if he knew about it. Mo Ting Shu seriously said that yes, but there was nothing they could do about it. It was Lin Lan's older sister Lin Lun's personal order. One rank nine person and the entire family was wiped out overnight. The king added that everyone, children and old people alike, he himself could observe the aftermath. Everyone died instantly. No one survived. Zhang Huang thought about the fact that it was two years ago. He was only 15 years old. At 15 years old, to see the death of his dear and dear ones with his own eyes. He can't even imagine the pain in his heart that he has to live with. He asked, why did it happen? Mo Yu angrily said that it was said that Lin Lun had his eyes on Mrs. Chu Ling, but she was unwilling to comply. This made Lin Lun angry, so she did what she did. Zhang asked irritably. It was their fault, but they still dare to blame it on others, even though how many of their innocent people had been killed. Chu Chong fell to his knees, saying that he hoped the master could help him. Zhang grimly told the man not to worry. Now that he had found out about everything, definitely make sure that justice would be served. Mo Yu asked him what he was going to do. Zhang angrily stated that he would help Lu Chun. He didn't care about the rest. Heading for the exit, the guy said that those killed 137 innocent people and should be punished for it. Everyone should know about it. He shouted that his student would not be a whipping boy. Meanwhile at Qianwu Academy, Mo Xueqing shockedly asked what did the man say. Master and Lu Chong went to the Lin family house and had a showdown there. This is Lu Chong's revenge. Meng Tao replied that yes, he did. Master said that he wanted as many people as possible to know what was going on. That's exactly how it was relayed to him. His father did it, so there should be no mistake, the girl asked in surprise, wondering if Lu Chun's enemy was the Lin family. She thought that if that was the case, it was not surprising that he preferred to keep his mouth shut. If she had such an enemy, she wouldn't dare to utter a word. It seemed that being an enemy in the Lin family was worse than being an enemy of an entire kingdom. The girl said she wouldn't do that. They can't stand by when their teacher is in danger. One of the classmates asked what they should do. One boy said it would be nice if they had a plan. They would want to help too. Mo Xueqing said okay, but she really doubts that their strength here will be enough, even though each of them has a certain amount of experience behind them. She hopes that they can find a practical application for it to reach its full potential. The girl added that they owed a huge debt to the master, so they could not leave him alone in the face of danger. They must act now. Meanwhile, at Zhang Huan's residence, Yuan Tao told Zhao Yao that he had good news for her. He also noticed that she had made a breakthrough again. The girl asked in surprise, what was the good news? Wang Yin said, did he get involved in something again? The guy cheerfully declared that it wasn't him this time. That unscrupulous master Liu seems to be in big trouble. He has a disciple named Lu Chong whom he has only seen a couple times in his life. He once offended the Lin family even though his family was destroyed. And now this Master Liu is picking a fight with the Lin family to stand up for his disciple. But Zhao Yao fearfully asked, What is the most famous family in Tianwu? The girl thought about the Lin family being incredibly dangerous. Not only is she incredibly strong, but she also has the support of Xuan Yuan. It is said that even the royal family doesn't dare to cross her. And who is this Master Liu to make a scene with them? Yuan Tao said that he made a lot of noise there and he also demands an apology. Zheng Yang asked what he was saying. Was it all for the sake of the disciple? Yuan Tao replied that yes. Zhao Yao thought about how the Lin family was so powerful that even they, mere disciples, had heard about it. There's no way Master Liu doesn't know about it. For the sake of a disciple to go this far. Such determination and fortitude. A man with such high teaching ethics. How could he be unreasonable and intentionally biased? Had she misunderstood something from the beginning? The girl said that even though Master Lu was unfair when they fought Mu Xue King, but to show such fortitude and try to protect his disciple with all his might was definitely a good teacher. Zheng Yang stated that they should see it with their own eyes. A man who wasn't afraid to go against the Lin family for the sake of his disciple. If they just sat here and didn't take any action, they would definitely get punched by Master Zhang. Zhao Yao said correctly, Master Zhang is willing to do anything for them. This Master Liu is also trying his best to protect his disciple. He is a good teacher and they can't just stay away. They have to go and find out what is going on there. Meanwhile, in the Tianwu Palace, the king shouted that this is madness, pure madness. He ordered all the soldiers to assemble and await his instructions. He then told the princess that she would go with him. If the Lin family really decided to attack Master Liu, they should stop them. The princess agreed. At the Lin family's gate, the king looked at the people in surprise. Mo Yu asked, is this the greatest demonic hand Chen Jianjie? 
Glancing at the elder, she added that he was a rank eight peak master. Always so mysterious. He usually doesn't care about what's going on around him. So why is he here? She looked at the other man who was the head of Tianwu Bank. The head of the calligraphy association, Meng Yuan, was also there. She was surprised that he had already returned. She then looked at the head of the alchemist guild, a third rank alchemist, Hong Yun, and at alchemist Mu and her daughter. The king asked that had they all been gathered by the Lin family to oppose Chairman Liu. The girl replied that no. Do they only need people to do that? But the king's guard told him that these people were here to help Chairman Liu. The king asked in surprise, what to help? Then he was shocked but asked how could this be? Mo Yu thought that even if the royal family had a showdown with the Lin family, they would never be able to acquire so many assistants. But a seventh-ranked elementary stage grandmaster was capable of it. How? Charisma? It was as if Zhang Huang had a special magic that allowed him to gather people around him. There are more and more of them, and they become stronger and stronger. The girl said that it might be some unique charm of his approach to his disciples. That's when the gate opened. Jian Zhe grudgingly said, The Lin family is here. Alchemist Mu added that it seemed to be in full force this time. The head of the bank said that a whole delegation had gathered under their door. Who would tolerate something like this? Lin Rotian asked that he was Liu Cheng. The other elder said that he had thought he would see someone incredibly powerful in front of him. But this was just a seventh-rank elementary stage master. And he still dares to come here and inconvenience the Lin family. Is he crazy? Zhang sternly asked which one was the head of the family. But Chu Chong told the master that the one in the center was Lin Rochen. Zhang said great, then added loudly that it was his disciple Chu Chong. Two years ago their family wiped out his family, all 137 people in one night. Do they have any recollection of it? The head asked, what is Chu Chong? That kid who ran away, is he still alive? He thought about the fact that back then, two years ago, the little guy had miraculously managed to escape but his spiritual energy was negligible and he didn't think that he could pose a threat. Now, two years later, he was already a rank eight master. The head thought to himself, who cares? Since they were hovering here today, they certainly wouldn't leave alive. He slyly said that it was fine that he was still alive here. He would arrange for him to meet his family today. John Zay asked shakily. They killed 137 people. He asked Head Lin, what does that mean? And the bank head said that he heard that the Chu family had moved out, but he didn't give it any importance. Yang Feng asked that in fact the Chu family was actually wiped out by the Lin family. They started shouting from the crowd that killing was forbidden in Tianwu, let alone mass murders like this. They should explain themselves. Lin Tao shouted that they, the Lin family, owed nothing to anyone. And the head said that the Chu family colluded with the criminals that intended to kill the princess. If they don't believe him, they can go to Xuanyuan. But Chu Chong shouted that it was a brazen lie. But Zhang Huang stopped him, saying that they would go in a different way. Zhang pointed two fingers and said, fine, they admit they are involved. Now he gives them two options to choose from. One, have the guilty party commit suicide. Two, the entire Lin family will be exterminated. But Lin Tao laughed and said, they have ranked seven and eight. Do they seriously think they can do this? And Lin Roshan and laughed even louder. And Zhang looked at them intently, saying that he understood they were not satisfied with any option. And the head replied to him that if he was so anxious to die, he would fulfill his wish right now. The second man standing next to Head Lin shouted that there was no need to waste time talking to him. Mo Yu said that it was the eleventh elder of the Lin family, Lin Hu. The king added that he is quite fiery and his fists are notorious. With all this, he's also a rank eight final stage master. He would not be easy to deal with. Meng Tao excitedly asked, Would everything be all right with master? Xu King replied that she thought everything should be fine. Her father told them not to worry. Chairman Liu is much more powerful. He is capable of many things. Not what you expect from a seventh rank master. The man thought about the fact that even though he hadn't seen him in action, they had worked together to create a rank four pill. In the face of the consequences of a possible explosion, the man did not hesitate at all. There was simply no way that such a person could be a rank seven master. Someone said the battle was about to begin. Lin Hu rushed to attack, shouting for the guy to die. Lu Chong stood in front of the master. But the master put his hand on his shoulder, grimly telling him to rest. Zhang then rushed forward himself, which surprised the disciple. Zhang slammed his fist into the elder's stomach. The one flew backwards, slamming into the goal. Zhang Ji asked in surprise, was it really the eighth-ranked final stage master of the eighth stage that was sent flying with just one strike? The bank chief asked, how did this happen? Mo Yu thought in surprise that he had only made a breakthrough to the initial stage of the seventh rank just a couple days ago and now he was able to knock out an opponent of the final stage of the eighth rank. 
How did he train after all? Meanwhile, Lu Chong thought about the fact that the master had just told him today that he should find the weakness of the enemy, not throw himself into the embrasure. So, where is the demonstration of this? Where are the weaknesses? As he approached Elder Lin Hu, the head thought to himself that he had not expected Lin Hu to quit so soon. His spiritual core had been shattered. Lin Hu was far from the weakest fighter in their family. To take him out of the game with a single blow was quite ruthless. Lin Roshan glared furiously at Zhang, saying that he still seemed to have some skills. It was not at all surprising that the latter was so arrogant. However, to be so arrogant and dare to go against the Lin family, he should put him in his place, Zhang asked gloomily. The one still couldn't choose between the two. It's even easier that way. Releasing his power, Zhang said as he beat the answer out of them. The crowd shockedly asked that he had an eighth-rank peak. Xu Qing also asked that the master actually had an eighth-rank peak. Father told her that it was not surprising at all then. With that kind of strength, he could very well challenge the Lin family. Mo Yu dumbfoundedly thought about the fact that he had made a breakthrough just a few days ago, and he had managed to peak in such a short time. It takes a long time to evolve to the eighth rank. Even if one was a genius, it would take several years for him to peak if he was at the initial stage. And this is just a few days. Zhao Yao thought in surprise that Master Liu has an eighth rank peak. Is he much stronger than Master Zhang? When he stopped her, she had already realized then that he was not a weak master at all. But who would have thought that he would be so strong? Another master of the Lin family rushed at Zhang, shouting that he was not weak at all. But it was still not enough to be so arrogant. When the man was already close to Zhang, the guy quickly dodged. Zhang raised his foot, preparing to strike. In the next instant, the guy hit the man between the legs. Everyone went into shock. Lu Chong thought about that gimmick again. Did Wang Ying realize that this was a heavenly Tao technique? It's the technique Master Zhang taught her. How did Master Liu know it? Zhao Yao asked her worried friend what happened. Did she say something? Wang Yin replied that no, nothing. While thinking to herself that Master Liu was moving too fast, it might just be a similar technique. She couldn't say for sure yet. Lin Rotian got even angrier, shouting that this was an unfair battle. He is shameless. Let him not be conceited. The head pointed his hand at the boy, ordering him to take him. The soldiers immediately rushed forward. Zhang irritatedly said that since the latter had made such a decision after all, he could now act. Almost imperceptibly, Zhang kicked each soldier with his feet, knocking them back. At the same time, he headed forward. Wang Yin covered her mouth with her hand, shocked at the thought of it being a heavenly strike. She couldn't tell for sure before, but now she was absolutely sure that it was this technique. But how could Master Liu know about the technique that Master Zhang had created? But then she realized that as soon as Master Zhang went to train, Master Liu appeared. Since then, as soon as Master Zhang appeared, there was no trace of Master Liu. Earlier, it was said that ESU was going to undergo a test from the Grand Master Hall. Could it be that his assignment was to create a different personality and go to teach? But after that, the girl felt very awkward because she realized that it meant that Mu Xuqing was also his disciple. If Master Liu is Master Zhang, then they were trying to poison him. This is unforgivable. How could it even be called that? But in the meantime, Lin Ruotian's eyes glowed white. A sphere of his strength appeared around the man. He shouted that Liu Cheng was finished. The king said in surprise as his life force came into motion and spiritual energy was released. This is a breakthrough to the ninth rank. But then the king's face turned serious because he thought that Lin Rotian was mainly relying on his connections with Xuan Yuan to be able to make a breakthrough. His strength was unstable, and he believed that one would not be a problem. However, his strength surpassed that of other rank 9 practitioners, so it was obvious that the one could make a breakthrough at any time. The king was angry, thinking that with Xuan Yuan's support and rank 9 strength, it was no wonder that he preferred to act from the shadows, like in that situation with the poisoning of the lion. All of this is to confuse them. He fears that his true goal is to ensure his dominance once he reaches rank 9, so that no one can stop him anymore. Zhang noticed that the crowd was agitated. The king kept thinking that if it wasn't for Representative Liu and Lin Ruoqian's conflict, they would never have known this secret. They were too naive to think that as long as the Divine Beast was alive, those would not dare to oppose the royal family. But Master Liu probably wouldn't be able to deal with him. Should they help? And Zhang thought to himself in surprise that this wasn't bad. He had managed to make a breakthrough to the eighth rank with a strength of 5,000 ding, which was almost equal to the strength of the ninth rank. But the difference in their strength was still astonishing. Even though he possesses the eye of insight and can see his opponent's weaknesses, he's still stronger than him and there's nothing he can do about it. The boy closed his eyes. 
Deciding it would be best to utilize the knowledge from the Library of the Heavenly Path, Zhang learned that he was only able to make a breakthrough so quickly because he had accepted the blood of a divine beast. The strength of even the weakest divine beasts exceeds that of a rank 8 divine beast. Just a single drop of blood was enough for the body of the person or animal that took it to begin to rebuild and prepare to make a breakthrough to rank 8. Zhang opened his eyes and furrowed his brows, thinking that even though his Heaven's Path techniques were quite effective in close combat, but in this case, they would all be useless. Throwing himself at the guy, Lin Roshan shouted for him to die. As he dodged, Zhang thought about the fact that, moreover, since he had divine beast blood flowing in his body, his defense would be just as strengthened. It wouldn't be easy. Folding his hands behind his back, Zhang continued to dodge, deciding that he just needed to wear the head down. Since he had triggered the release of such power, Zhang didn't believe that he would be able to hold out for long. When the head's strength diminished, he irritatedly said that he had assumed that Zhang would not be able to withstand the breakthrough of his furious attacks. Who would have thought that this guy would choose such tactics? It's as if he can see through him and predict his every move. He blocks his punches at the very last moment. Mo Yu excitedly asked, could this really be called a battle? But the king and princess looked at Principal ZB in surprise when he said that it was as if Master Liu was reading Lin Roshan's every move and not even letting him finish them. The director thought of anticipating his actions by moving to a safe place in advance, thus only angering him without giving him a chance. How does he manage to do that? Not even every third-ranked grandmaster could do such a thing. Lin Rotian became angry again, asking if the man would even fight or not. But Zhang calmly asked, what are they doing now? The one is attacking, the one is dodging. They are constantly on the move after all. Isn't this a battle? Pulling out his sword, the leader told the man to try out his weapon. Zhang looked at him questioningly, then gave a sly grin saying that was fine. He turned to Zhao Yao shouting for her to give the blade. The girl asked in surprise, why is Master Liu asking her for a blade? But afterward he said that since they were here to help him, it didn't matter. The girl took her blade out of her bracelet and threw it to the master. Thoth easily grabbed it by the hilt. After that, he rushed into battle with a smile. Lin Rochian was already close to the guy. Zhang made a circle around himself, forming a large number of blades. Putting his blade forward, Zhang attacked. The head only had to dodge. While defending with his blade, the head thought about how this aura even surpassed the true essence. The head of the bank said in surprise that these blades resonate. Is this a skill that surpasses the true essence of blade wielding, the spirit of the blade? John Jie was also surprised, asking how Master Liu managed to do this, but then the men looked shocked at Representative Jiang, who said that it wasn't a blade spirit. The man explained that the blade spirit is divided into three boundaries, upper, middle, and lower, depending on the skill and perception of the master. At the lower boundary, the master is able to summon the spirit of the blade, which will become an extension of his body. Even though Master Liu has summoned dozens of swords, but he is only using the spiritual energy of the blade itself, he still hasn't mastered it completely. Master Guan looked at the head in surprise. He said, this is only half of it. Looking at Zhang who continued to use the technique, the head said that the guy understood the true essence of the blade, but his skills still didn't allow him to use it to its full potential. Once his spiritual power is fully developed, he will be able to fully comprehend the true essence and develop his power to the maximum. Then he fears he will be unrivaled. Zhang Shu thought about how even so, but he had managed to reach such a level. How is this possible? And Zhao Yao thought about the fact that this aura is familiar to her. The style that Master Liu is using is a lot different from her Heaven's Path style. But this is definitely a Heaven's Path aura. She looked at Wang Yin, a question on her face, was it their teacher? Wang Yin nodded awkwardly. Swinging the blade again, Zhang said, The decision to use the weapon may have been the most reckless. Lin Ruoshan was able to dodge, but he thought about the fact that a moment ago he'd been doing nothing but dodging. But now the bastard was attacking without sparing any effort. The director said that it was strange. When it came to close combat, Master Liu would always dodge. But now it was as if they had switched places. Zhao Yao said that the Lin family is famous for their swordsmanship skills. Everyone in the kingdom knows about it. But what's going on? The principal said that it's not that Mr. Lin is weak. It's just that Chairman Liu is too strong. Under normal circumstances, even if he had comprehended the true essence of the blade and the soul of the blade, but with rank 8 strength, it is impossible to continuously use the spirit of the sword for such attacks. Everything has its own limit. The bigger and more active the attacks are, the more true key is absorbed. But Zhang kept going, enveloping himself in a golden light. The principal said that after so many lunges, his aura was still bright and strong. Mr. Lin can't even strike back. 
This can only mean that either his aura is incredibly saturated or incredibly pure. Director C.A.B. said that only after developing the aura to a certain level can it be used without fear of exhaustion. And only after reaching a certain level of aura purification are the blades able to reach a target at such a distance while maintaining strength and speed. Zhang rushing to attack said to Mr. Lin, he decided to use the weapon himself, didn't he? So why doesn't he attack? The head was shocked at what he heard, and his mouth was bleeding. Fixated, the man thought about his blades flying everywhere. He doesn't even have the ability to defend himself properly. How can he attack? Need to end this. The man turned to Master Liao and Healer Master, saying that it was time to act. If they poisoned this man, he would agree to all their conditions and do even more. The king and the others were shocked that the head of the Liao Poison Hall and the Healer Master were here. Zhang Shu wondered in surprise, what do they want to poison? Was it really the Red Lotus Healer Master and the head of the Poison Hall, Liao Shun? The boy stepped forward saying fine, he would remember his words. Then he told the elder to leave it to him. Mo Yu excitedly said that the Poison Hall Master, a smaller in measure, is a second-rank Poison Master. If he takes the case, she fears not only the eighth-ranked experts will suffer, but the ninth-ranked experts will also have a hard time. What should we do? Mo Tianxue said irritably. Who would have thought that the Lin family would decide to use poisons this time? Master Guan asked the head what should they do. Zhang Shu replied that they should help Master Zhang. If the poison master really decided to act, he would immediately petition the association to have them deal with the Red Lotus. Meanwhile, Lian Shun asked Zhang that his name is Liu Cheng, right? He has to admit that he is impressed. But unfortunately, they are on opposite sides today. And Lin Roshi and I yelled once to stop talking and killed him faster. And Zhang asked the healer master with a chuckle. Now that he wasn't burdened by the terms of the contract, did he have enough courage to bring Mr. Liao here and wreak havoc? The elder shockedly asked, What is the contract? And Liao Shun covered his hand with purple fire and said with a smile, He even knows about the contract. He is perfectly aware of it. The old man thought about the fact that only a few people know about it. But Zhang is currently in disguise. Could it be that Chairman Liu is really Master Zhang? No wonder, and he kept guessing, how could a certain genius doctor appear so suddenly in a city with a specialist like him? Liao Shun rushed at the guy. That even if the guy was familiar with Mr. Healer, it didn't change the point. But the healer San grabbed the guy's arm, asking him to stop. The head of the poison hall asked irritably, what is he doing? With terror in his eyes, the old man mentally told the guy that there was no need. He is Master Zhang. Liao Shun shockedly looked at the guy, then at the elder, and asked if the latter was also sure. The one replied that he was more than sure. Zhang asked again with a chuckle. What was it? Was it really possible to tame the beast? And Lin Roshan shouted at them not to listen to this nonsense and just get it over with. Unable to bear it, Liao Xuan swung his hand, directing the poison at the man, shouting for him to shut up already. The man was confused, not sure what to say. He only had time to cover himself with his arms as the venom cores exploded. When he opened his eyes, he saw that Liao Xun was already beside him, about to strike with his fist. The man wanted to say something to Master Liao, but the guy yelled for him to stop calling his name. He didn't know anything. After that, he hit him. While beating the man, the guy thought about the fact that if he stood up to the Grand Master, he might not only lose his job, but his life as well. All because of that bastard. He would beat him to death. Only then would he feel better. The guy shouted that he would be doing the world a favor by destroying him. Everyone present was awkwardly wondering what was even going on. Aren't these Mr. Lin's comrades? I thought he said he wanted to poison Chairman Liu. So why has he abruptly switched sides and is now pounding Roshan Lin? Ah Zhang was also surprised, thinking about how cruel this man was. He poisoned his opponent by blocking his strength, and now he's just beating him up. But if he just kills him like this, how will he then? Zhang told the guy that that was enough. He immediately stood up and bowed, and then mentally said that he apologized for being so rude. He didn't realize that it was him. Zhang told him to stop talking nonsense and let him step aside. The boy bowed low again, obeying. Mu Shui Qing thought about the fact that she was almost certain that Master Lu would be defeated in this battle, and that's why she called out the elders. But they too are just standing there with their mouths hanging open, and Master Lu has already dealt with everyone. And this Poison Hall Master, there are such terrible rumors about him. So why did he suddenly become so quiet and peaceful when he saw the Master? Lin Roshan sat on the ground with his head down, but he gloomily said that Liu Cheng had forced him, taking out a red jade with lightning and starting to activate it. The man said that he didn't want to use this as it would cost him a lot. But the man left him no choice. Like a madman, the man slammed Jade to the ground, shouting that he would die here and now. A red dome covered the entire neighborhood. Zhang Shu shockingly asked, 
What was this deadly third-rank peak formation that Princess Lin Lun had left behind? The king frightenedly said that it was a death formation that the princess had ordered from the Xuan Yuan spellcasters to prevent the destruction of the Lin family. Laughing like a madman, Lin Rosian said that they were all finished now. They dared to go against the Lin family. They are all suicidal, Lin Roshan shouted, asking. They are all here to watch a show, right? The show where they destroy the Lin family. Let them dream. Since they are here, he will destroy them all in one fell swoop, Yan Feng said fearfully. The Lin family has trump cards up their sleeve. No wonder the royal family never once dared to go against them. The bank director agreed and then asked Chairman Jiang Yu that he was familiar with formations, after all. Would he help them get out of here? Zhang Shu replied that he didn't have any options. Magic fields of this level were beyond his expertise. The men sadly said that they were finished. Lin Roshin laughed again, telling them not to even think about getting out of here. Only a third rank caster could do that. But Zhang asked unhappily, What is the spell or the third rank? He doesn't think so. The guy stomped his foot. In the next instant, the entire dome cracked. Shards flew down. Lin Rotian thought about the fact that even a fourth-ranked caster wouldn't be able to destroy it with such ease. How did he manage it? He remembered that Elder Lin had once mentioned that Chairman Liu was capable of destroying information. But back then, they had concluded that he was probably just familiar with the formation in which the golden-tailed lion was imprisoned. But what about this information? Even without knowing the details, he was only able to activate it because he understands the basics of how it functions. But Doctor... Someone who is completely ignorant of such matters. How is that possible? Alchemist Mu was shocked but asked that the formation was destroyed. Jian Ji asked that is it really just one step? Zhang Shu thought that even ninth rank practitioners were not capable of destroying such a formation in such a short time with just one move. A calligraphy master, an alchemist, a beast tamer, a master, a doctor, and a spellcaster as well. Who would even be able to do such a thing? The king asked. What guy is capable of destroying this kind of information with just one move? Mo Yu thought about how it was definitely not a coincidence. Looking at the gate, Lin Roshan thought that he must inform Xuan Yuan about this. Otherwise, the Lin family would definitely be destroyed. Rushing to the gate, the man shouted that it was time to leave. He grabbed the round lever and spun it. An array of thick fog covered the area of the entire estate. But Zhang Huang asked, what was the one going to run away without apologizing? He had already said he wouldn't leave him until he apologized. The teacher told Lu Chun to follow him. Zhang took a step with his foot. The fog immediately dissipated. The healer San asked the head of the poison hall what they should do now. It looked like they weren't being released here. The boy looked at the angry faces of the men. Rushing towards the gate, Liao Xuan shouted that he was coming soon. The elder rushed after him, saying that he was coming with him. The king said that it seemed to be the end for the Lin family. Director C.B. agreed with him. The bank director said that when they heard from the kids that Master Liu had decided to fight the Lin family, they came here to admonish him that it wasn't a good idea. But it's ridiculous to even think about it now. Mu Shui Qing thought about destroying the third rank formation in just one step, leaving not the slightest step for such a powerful family, such a martial spirit. Without putting in any effort, dealt with practitioners, should have largely surpassed his own. This is her teacher. The girl looked at Zhao Yao and thought that Master Zhang might be a great person, but her Master Liu was capable of something similar. Such blade techniques, defeating rank 8 and 9 practitioners, and destroying rank 3 information with just one strike. Zhao Yao noticed the girl's gaze, and thought about the fact that she had to admit that Master Liu is strong. But Master Zhang is no worse. The girl unleashed her power, revealing that she was of the middle stage of rank 8. Mu Shui King shockingly thought about the fact that wasn't that one at rank 6 just a couple days ago. How did she manage to overcome two ranks in such a short time? Was it really all Master Jiang's doing? The girl sighed, thinking about the fact that she was dissatisfied with their second fight and thought that she could easily overpower her, barely reaching rank 7. But who would have thought someone could become that much stronger? Now that one was much stronger than her. She even skipped the 7th rank and immediately reached the middle of the 8th rank. How is she supposed to defeat her? The bank director asked his son that she was at rank 6 just a couple days ago, right? Was Grandmaster Zhang such a great teacher that his students could become so strong in a couple of days? Meng Tao replied that indeed, and that Lu Chong boy is also the same. Master Liu had only known him for a couple days, but he had already managed to reach the mid-eighth rank. People were discussing, how did he manage it in just a couple of days? It seems like Chairman Liu and Grandmaster Zhang are simply geniuses. They are both incredibly strong. Someone said that he was more amazed by Chairman Liu. In just five days, he managed to make a disciple so strong. And what's more, 
His skills are simply amazing. They were just able to observe it with their own eyes. As for Grandmaster Zhang, he thinks that he is only at the beginning stage of the eighth rank. The others said that he thinks Grandmaster Zhang is stronger. He has accomplished so much, a true genius. He's also young and still has a long way to go. Running away, Lin Ruoshan thought about the one catching up. As he approached the sign, the man thought about the fact that he needed Lunar. Placing his hand on the stove, he activated it. He said that Liu Cheng, the royal family, and everyone else would pay for it. A man wrote on the sign that Liu Cheng wants to destroy the Lin family. Her father and brother are badly injured. That's when he heard an explosion from his back. The man asked, what the hell? Why isn't any formation working? How is this possible? Zhang and the others appeared on the doorstep. The guy said that they weren't done after all. So why is the guy running away? The man laughed, asking if the man would dare to kill him. He had already informed the princess. Her men would be here any minute now. If he even laid a finger on him, not only would he be killed, but the entire Tianwu kingdom would be destroyed. Zhang asked calmly. What the man meant to say was that as long as they didn't touch him, the princess wouldn't do anything to them. Zhang said that was enough chatter. In any case, there is already poison circulating in his body, and he had temporarily sealed his powers. Now it's only up to the guy to decide what to do with him. Once finished, let him find him in the academy. Lin Roshan was indignant. Walking out, Zhang ordered Liao Shun to stay here and help Lu Chun. The boy bowed. The man told him not to be so smug, but then shouted fearfully to Lu Chun as if he would not approach. Stepping outside again, Zhang thanked everyone for coming to his rescue. They replied to him that it wasn't necessary. There was no need for these formalities. They hadn't even done anything. Zhang said that he was very grateful to them all for their willingness and desire to help him. In the future, he would personally give them instructions as a thank you. Everyone was surprised by this. They said that it was simply unbelievable. Even though Chairman Liu may not be a renowned master, but he is a rank 8 expert who has managed to reach the Soul Blade. Having the opportunity to listen to his lectures is like having the opportunity to become stronger. Lu Chong came to the master thinking that he was able to get revenge, and it was all only because of the teacher. He had finally found a reason to move on with his life. After bowing to the teacher, he asked the master to accept his thanks. Zhang told him to get up. Zhang added that the latter could now tell him why the Lin family had destroyed his family. The guy said that as the teacher had already realized, the Lin family did this to his family not because of that incident, but because of their family value. Zhang looked at the guy in surprise. He explained that it was a volume of ancestral scripture. The teacher asked why the Lin family needed it. The fellow replied that it wasn't that the relic was of great value, but that there were notes there made by Master Confucius himself. Zhang asked, Is this outstanding Master Confucius, the founder of the Hall of Masters? He thought to himself unsurprisingly. The records he himself left behind are priceless. It turns out that Lu Chun's family possessed a similar value. If this information is revealed, not to mention the crazy Lin family he feared, the entire Xuanyuan kingdom would rush after him. Zhang asked the guy that his ancestors knew Confucius. The fellow replied that he did not know in such detail. He had never even seen those writings. Only his father had mentioned something about them. Lu Chong added that these scriptures were not in the house. They were safely hidden in the mountains. If Master wished, he could retrieve them for him. Zhang replied with a smile that there was no need. Even though they were priceless, he didn't need them. He thought about how it was an incredible thing, however. Could it be compared to the golden page of the heavenly path? These scriptures might have incredible value, but they would not help him in any way to refine his strength, so they were useless to him. Moreover, they belonged to his disciple. It was because of them that his family was destroyed. He has no desire or meaning to fight his disciple. Lu Chong bowed again, apologizing for not thinking his words through. The boy thought about the fact that the master had done so much for him, but it wasn't all for some writings and his words sounded as if he suspected him of being disinterested in his actions. Zhang asked what the guy decided to do to the head of the Lin family. The guy replied that he didn't kill him. He added that Master Liao had helped him finally seal his powers. He had to carry out his revenge, but he clearly realized that death would be too easy an outcome for him. Zhang grinned and thought about what he had to say, that he had grown incredibly during this incident. Before, the latter could only think of revenge. If he had just killed him, that would have been too lenient. But now, by depriving the head of his powers, he made him suffer. That's much worse than death. Just then, the guy took out something from his pocket, saying that he had taken it from the Lin family. Zhang realized that it was a spatial ring. Zhang told the student to put it down on the table. Today had been an incredibly busy day. The guy needed to rest. After that, Lu Chong left. As soon as the door closed, 
Zhang happily walked over to the ring and picked it up, thinking that now he would see what was interesting. It wasn't that he liked taking other people's things, but as far as the Lin family was concerned, he didn't feel any guilt. Looking into the ring, he saw a lot of riches. He said that as expected from this family, there was a lot of stuff. Here he found a box with a large number of spirit stones in it. He said that with so many spirit stones, it would not be a problem to reach the ninth rank. Opening the chest, he decided to see if there were any useful books in there. He took one out, reading that they were methods of feeding on spiritual blood. He said that there were rare books on the guide to reaching rank 9 in there. May 10 wouldn't be enough for him, but it was still better than nothing. Then he looked in the other direction, asking what is it? He thought it was a jug that was made of spiritual jade. After opening the jug, he learned with the help of the library that it was a jug of both spiritual jade and the work of the seven masters of his craft. Prevents blood spoilage and the weathering of divine aura. Contains two drops of the blood of a divine beast of the first rank, an armored dragon. Zhang realized that it was related to the book Spiritual Blood Feeding Methods. He was curious to see if he could combine it with the cultivation methods from the royal family's book depository. After a small amount of time, he succeeded in creating a golden book. Opening it up, Zhang said that physical development and spiritual practices could help a person develop their abilities to the third level or slightly higher. But breaking through to higher ranks would be problematic. But spiritual blood could make a person's body as strong as that of a divine beast. Holding the book in his hands, he said it was also of the body. So he would call it Heaven's Way Body Strengthening Practices. Part 2. When it worked, he pulled drops of blood from the jug as well, and decided to try it right away. He began to apply some spiritual blood to the cultivation points, absorbing the power it contained, strengthening his body. If everything went well, he would become much stronger. After a small amount of time, he was able to successfully complete the Heaven's Path Body Strengthening Practices. Looking at his hand, he thought happily to himself that everything had gone just perfectly. As he stepped out into the courtyard against the wall, he realized that now was the time to test the power he had gained. The guy threw a punch and a crack went down the wall. The value of 9,999 din popped up on the wall. He asked in surprise that it was practically 10,000. Zhang thought about how it was a pity that there were only two drops of spirit blood. If there were more, he would have been able to make a breakthrough to the peak ninth rank. Zhang speculated that maybe the other students had some enemies that needed to be massacred. Then he would be able to obtain more spirit stones. Master Sun walked up to him from behind. The boy looked at him and asked if he was feeling better already. The principal thanked him for his help, and then said that the man should have known that his tea had been poisoned. Zhang awkwardly replied that actually, he only realized it after everything that happened. In other words, he too is a victim. He assumes that this poison was meant for him, but he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Don't let him worry. He's going to find out who did it anyway. Together they'll get justice. Mo Hong Yi unhappily thought to himself, What the hell is that victim? He's the only one here who got hurt. Zhang asked, What's wrong? The prince replied that there was no need to find out anything. He was poisoned by his favorite disciples. Zhang asked in confusion, What disciples? Hong Yi said to Zheng Yang, Yuan Tao and company. He saw this one with his own eyes. Zhang angrily shouted that they were rascals. He wouldn't be Zhang Huan if he didn't give them a good beating after this. Meanwhile, Zheng Yang sneezed and Yuan Tao happily told Zhao Yao that it was so cool. Everyone stood there with their mouths open. Yang Li added that after something like this, no one would dare to underestimate their master. Even if this master Liu is quite strong, but he still needed the help of the head of the poison hall to win this fight. Yuan Tao continued that if he were in her shoes, at the time when everyone was discussing who was the tougher master, he would have challenged Mu Xueqing and taught her a lesson in front of everyone. But Zhao Yao sadly said that she thought that right now, it was better for them to reflect on what kind of punishment they would suffer. Yuan Tao asked in bewilderment, What is she talking about? Zhao Yao told Wang Yin that she thought it was better for her to explain everything to them. She would think about the best way for them to apologize to the master in the meantime. The guys looked at Wang Yin and asked what was going on. The girl replied that they suspected that Master Liu was Master Zhang. The guys shocked exclaimed, Is it the same person? Wang Ying said yes. The techniques that he used in the battle with the Lin family were exactly the techniques that he had taught her. She was sure of it. And when that one received the blade from Zhao Yao, he used the Heaven's Path technique. And the way he treated them, Zheng Yang asked his friend fearfully, Master Liu is Master Zhang. Yuan Tao said, didn't they try to poison him? After all, they even cursed him. Yuan Tao awkwardly suggested, why don't they just pretend like they don't know about it? They would go to Tianwu Academy and apologize. The other two agreed to this deciding that they would go together. 
But then there was a ringing sound behind their backs. Wang Yin asked in surprise, what is that bell? Zhao Yao said that it was from the Hall of Masters. Promises the masters and obliges them to appear. Something serious has happened. Rushing to run, the girl said that she had to go there. If the master is in Wancheng, he should definitely be there. Meanwhile, the king said that it was a call from the Hall of Masters. Mo Yu added that she should go and find out what was going on. Hung Yi told Zhang that they were being called. We need to grab some disciples too. Zhang agreed with him. Zhang Cheng ran over to Deputy Guan asking, What happened? Why did the association send four-star masters to them? The man replied that he didn't understand yet either. Zhang Cheng said that the head should be able to handle it, right? Four-star master Su Fan and four-star master Lin Yu Heng were in one of the halls. The first one told the head that they already knew about it. The second asked if Master Yang was still in Wancheng. Could they pay him a visit? Zhang Shu replied that he was in the city, however. They were always at home. And if they wanted to visit him, he should warn him in advance. Meanwhile, it was reported from the street that Master Sun, Master Lin, Master Zhang, and Mo Hong Yi had arrived. They are in the examination room. It seems like they want to finish their appraisals early. Zhang Shu asked in surprise. What did those want to finish in advance? But it had only been a few days, right? Had they already managed to win the favor of the students in 40%? Ling Yuhang asked. Is Zhang Huang here? The head replied that yes, he is. Su Fan said that was great. They would just like to see what progress Master Yang has made. Lin Yuhang said that he thought it was a good idea. However, if those people found out that they were four-star masters, it might affect the result because of such news. Therefore, they will ask the head not to tell anyone about it. After they see the results, they will decide what to do. Everyone gathered in the master hall. The crowd was discussing Master Lu and Master Sun who had entered. Someone asked that Master Sun had only been at the academy for a few days, right? He was told that yes, his lectures are really very useful. One and in his friends are attending his classes. He has managed to become stronger before such a short period of time. Another asked that if only these two are here, does it mean that the Hall of Masters approved them as an exception to the rules? The first replied that he hadn't heard of anything like that. Perhaps some sort of privilege. Someone asked why their students were with them then. Zhang Shu asked the teachers, who would like to go first? Zhang said with a smile to Master Sun, something skipping ahead of him. The man told his students to show everything they could do. Mo Yu asked in surprise that is Liu Cheng really Zheng Huang along with him two-star master Mo Hong Yi. Watching the two students climb the stairs, the crowd asked that isn't the exam to measure the level of disposition. Do they really want to take the exam beforehand? But not one of them has reached the mental state of comprehension yet, right? They'll see what happens. On the wall, the result 42 popped up. Mo Hong Yi exhaled, thinking about the fact that he had passed. He would finally become a two-star master. There could be no doubt this time. Su Fan mentally told his friend that this was the result in just 10 days. Lin Yu Hang replied that this Mo Hong Yi definitely has potential. He could be called a kind of genius. Even in the Fenhao realm, he would be able to rank up with the renowned masters. However, he still has a long way to go before he reaches the alliance level. Zhang Shu told Master Liu that he was now. The guy asked the head that it takes the loyalty of at least one disciple to reach 40%, right? He replied that yes. Zhang thought that considering what they had gone through the past couple of days, their loyalty should have already reached the 40% mark. Only need 40 and the exam would be successfully passed. Zhang Huang told Meng Tao to get going. He thought about how it was better to start small. Su Fan mentally asked, Is this really Zhang Huang? He looks quite confident. They would see what his disciples would show. Lin Yuhang said that about 20 years ago, their guild used the same method to test the qualifications of aspiring two-star master titles. If he was not mistaken, the apprentice of the most talented master had reached the highest mark of 65%. Su Fang said with a smile that the same level of loyalty people showed to their relatives. To achieve such results in just 10 days without revealing your instinctive identity, there are a lot of real geniuses here. Lin Yu Hong said that this Zhang Huang has broken many existing records. They would see if he could break the 65% mark. Su Fan said that only those who were able to break the record would have the right to stand in line with the great masters. The number 62 popped up on the wall. Su Fang mentally said that it was not bad. Lin Yu Hong replied that 62% was an impressive result. However, it doesn't reach that great result, still weaker. Zhang asked what he passed, right? Zhang Xu said that it was correct and then asked that aren't his better students Mu Xueking and Lu Chong. Zhang was confused, but Lu Chong told the master that he wanted to give it a try. Zhang thought about how he just wanted to pass the exam, but they were insisting. After all, he just wanted to keep his major trump cards hidden. The guy said it best, so he should be careful. Lu Chong opened the gate and walked inside. 
Su Fan mentally asked Chairman Jiang why he had decided to summon this disciple. Would his confidence level be higher? But the man smilingly replied for them to just watch. The number 99 popped up on the wall. Su Fan thought shockedly, how could this be possible? Ling Yuhang thought that this was absolute devotion. He is even willing to sacrifice himself for the master. The man recalled that the maximum mark was 100%. Only six star masters were able to reach 90. This was a direct proof that a disciple was so devoted to his master that he was willing to die at his command. Su Fan realized that they really thought that his strength was inferior to those geniuses. But who would have thought that he just didn't want to send his best disciple? Not to mention the others. Even they, the ones who had been God with their disciples for 30 years, had never reached this level. And it only took him six days. What kind of monster is this? Everyone in the audience was surprised to see so much. Someone asked, how could he be called an ordinary master after that? Even the most outstanding masters aren't capable of something like this, right? Jiang Shu thought there with a smile, which was as expected. He said that since everyone had successfully passed the exam, they wouldn't waste each other's time anymore. He told the boys that the two of them could return to their true guises. When those took off their masks, everyone saw that it was Master Mo and Master Jiang. Someone exclaimed that it was Master Zhang Huang. Chairman Liu is Master Zhang. No wonder it was very strange that two geniuses appeared in the kingdom at the same time. It turns out that it's all one person. Yan Feng said that he had admired two people in his life, and as it turned out, it was one. Master Liu's disciples were surprised to realize that it was Master Zhang. Mu Xuqing awkwardly thought that they had dreamed of being taught by Zhang Huang before, but realized that it was impossible. Who could have known that it was the same person all this time? If they had found out earlier, then there would be no point for him and Zhao Yao to fight. Zhao Yao also felt uncomfortable waiting for this, and Yuan Tao tearfully hugged his friend, asking what should they do now. Now the master would abandon them. Zheng Yang said that he would also like to know what they should do now and Wang Yin tearfully thought that she was very guilty. She would never go along with those two again and make such a terrible mistake. The king is shocked but asked that Chairman Liu is Master Zhang. The princess looked at him awkwardly. The man sighed, thinking about the fact that he originally thought that Master Liu had more prospects than Master Zhang, and wanted his daughter to have more contact with him specifically so that he could have a wonderful son-in-law in the future. But now, it looks like his dreams are over. Zhang Shu handed the guys tokens that had two stars on them. The man told them that they had both passed the exam. All that remained was to complete the recognition ceremony. In addition, they will have to familiarize themselves with their new rights and responsibilities. So let them change their clothes and come to the Feng Shu Hall. And Zhang happily thought that finally. When they came to the Feng Shu Hall, Zhang saw the statue, and he recognized that old man. The guy asked unhappily, Who is this shameless old man, the previous chairman? who even put up a statue of such a person. All the masters were shocked at the words they heard. Lin Yuhang shouted at him, asking how dare he. Doesn't he know who it is? The guy replied that whoever it was had unexpectedly snuck up on him. And then the guy grudgingly asked, Who are they? Where did they come from? And following them around. Stopping his angry comrade, Su Fan told Master Zhang to wait. He and Master Lin had arrived from afar. It was just that Chairman Zhang had not had time to introduce them to him yet. Zhang waved his hand saying that he would forgive them this time. The men were surprised again, but then Lin Yuhang cleared his throat and calmly said that he realized that he had been somewhat rude, but he would introduce it to him now, and then he would understand why he acted like that. This is the Feng Shu Hall. Masters can receive insignia, but only the memory of the nine star instructors remains here forever. And this man was given an entire statue. Does he still not understand what he's getting at? Zhang asked shocked only nine star instructors, really. The man replied that this was correct. He is the one whom everyone honors. And since he has become a master, he should respect him, Master Confucius. Zhang Huang realized that he was referring to his writings to find a way to cure an incurable disease. And he just told him to his face that he refused to be his disciple. The boy fell on his knees in front of the statue, telling Master Confucius that he agreed. Let him accept him sooner rather than later. Zhang drenched himself in tears thinking about the fact that this old man hadn't even introduced himself back then. How could he know who he was? If he had known it was Master Confucius, he would have immediately accepted his offer without any hesitation. The men awkwardly wondered if anyone was serious. Su Fan mentally asked the chairman that wasn't he. He replied that judging from the expression on his face in this performance, no. Hong Yi said that Master Confucius has long since retired in the world. But and it is just his statue, it will not answer him. Zhang awkwardly asked, It is just a statue. Is it unconscious? 
Walking into the hall, the guy thought about the fact that he had such a great opportunity to become a disciple of Master Confucius himself, and he had messed it up like this. Zhang Shu suggested exactly how to start. The man said that even though the two of them had successfully passed the exam, however, before they could receive their insignia, they had to be recognized by the other masters as well as the Feng Shou Hall. Once they succeeded in this, as a reward, no special aura would come over them. That is, even if they don't have their master token with them, others will still recognize them by their aura. Zhang asked surprised, what was it to succeed? Were there really those who could not get approval? Zhang Shu replied that, of course. Recognition is made by the ancestors. There are countless ancestor tablets in this hall, and each one contains a piece of the spirit of previous outstanding masters. Even if they can't swear or have no consciousness, they are still able to determine if they are qualified enough to become a master. The man added that they just have to kneel right there. If they get approval, the tablets will come in motion, and after that, an aura will descend upon them. The more ancestors that recognize them, the more concentrated that aura will be. It will also be an omen of what successes they can achieve in the future. Zhang asked seriously, what happens to those who are not recognized? Is their title of master revoked? Zhang Shu laughed and replied that of course not. Not getting recognized was a normal phenomenon. The plaques in this hall were given to the famous and talented masters in their lifetime. Only those who can really get their attention will receive recognition. Usually the probability of success for one-star masters is less than 1%, while for two-star masters it is no more than 10%. The boys looked at each other and said to the prince that these were depressing numbers. Zhang Shu said that for three-star masters, it was 20%, four-star masters 30%, and five-star masters 70%. Only six-star masters could be 100% sure of receiving recognition. But how many elders will approve a master is an individual matter. Lin Yuhang said that actually, the recognition of Feng Shu Hall is actually a tribute. But the more masters recognize him, the more obvious his talent is, and the more likely his future successes are. One of the most famous geniuses of the International Alliance, Jiang Zijie, successfully passed the exam and became a four-star master before he reached the age of 30. This story had become a kind of legend. He was recognized by seven masters when he became a two-star master. Zhang thought unhappily about the fact that even before he reached the age of 30, he had become a four-star master. All the masters he knows are not young anymore. To be a four-star master before 30, he must have incredible talent. According to the classification spelled out in the books, one-star, three-star masters are rookie masters. Four-star, six-star masters are mid-rank masters, and seven-star, nine-star masters are top-rank masters. There's an incredible gap between three and four stars. It's like the difference between rank seven and eight. It's not something an ordinary person can do. In that case, Mo Hongyi's so-called genius is nothing compared to him. Han noticed Zhang Huang's strange gaze and thought about why he was looking at him with such an expression on his face. Zhang Shu said with a smile that they shouldn't worry so much. It would be great if they received recognition but it wasn't that important. It had already been 300 years since someone had succeeded in their master hall. He hopes while he's chairman, at least one such master will appear. If that happens, he'll have a great reason to brag to the other chairman. Zhang awkwardly thought that he was obligated to get recognition, and it turns out that it doesn't matter much. All masters have their own tastes and preferences. Besides, they had already passed away a long time ago, so if he didn't get their recognition, it wouldn't be a big deal. Zhang Shu told Mo Hong Yi that they would start with him. The guy was thinking about the fact that he didn't get recognized when he became a one-star master. They'll see how it goes this time. Kneeling on the mat, the prince thought that if he succeeded, he could become famous. At least he wouldn't be in Zhang Huan's shadow. The prince shouted that he, Master Mo Hong Yi, was here to pay his respects to them and gain their recognition. A silence hung. But then one of the plaques vibrated and fell. Her energy began to transfer into the prince. Zhang wondered in surprise, is this the special aura of recognition by an elder? Who would have thought that this is what constitutes recognition? But the aura is so weak, and Mo Hong Yi was rather thinking that even if just one plaque fell down, it still meant that he had received recognition. In any case, he had already become someone who was recognized in Wancheng for the first time in 300 years. Zhang Shu said impressively, as expected from a recognized genius of Wancheng. The man thought there, now this Zhao Shui won't be so arrogant anymore, Su Fan said with a smile. Not bad. A two-star master and he had already received recognition. Even he got it when he was a three-star master. Zhang Huang also said that it was impressive. 
Lin Yuhang said that he only got recognition when he became a four-star master, and only one plaque fell. He thinks Master Mo is really talented. Zhang Shu said that Master Mo had been recognized, now it was Master Zhang's turn. Zhang thought about the fact that he was already a chosen master, so it didn't matter if he would get their recognition. But since he's here, it's worth a try. The boy knelt on the pillow. He then shouted out that Master Zhang Huang was here to pay their respects and gain their recognition. Everyone was watching him closely, thinking that he had shown amazing results before. He might even break Zhang Zijie's record. There was silence again. The silence continued, but the statue outside moved. Su Fan asked, that is there really not a single one? Lin Yuhang said that obviously there was no movement they observed. That is to say, the one did not get recognized. He failed this test. Su Fan sadly approached the guy, saying that the recognition of the masters was not based on his strength or capabilities. It was more just how fit he was to be their disciple. Perhaps his talent just discouraged them. Zhang Shu also approached the guy, saying with a smile that it was quite possible. After all, it couldn't be that he wouldn't be recognized. Therefore, Master Zhang should not. But then the man's eyes widened because he saw something up ahead. Zhang Shu shouted that it wasn't the plaques, but the statue of Confucius. Everyone looked at the way the statue trembled. Su Fan asked in surprise. The statue came into motion. Ogloa said that he had seen moving tablets before. He couldn't even imagine that the Confucius statue was even capable of such a thing. But then the man realized that she didn't just come into motion. In the next instant, the statue fell, causing the head to break. The stone head rolled towards Grandmaster Zhang, who meanwhile sadly lowered his head, thinking that he was from another world. So even if he embarrassed himself, it wouldn't be a big deal. But hearing a shout, the boy turned around and was frightened. In a state of shock, he hit her head with his fist, yelling at her to get it. This caused it to shatter into splinters. All four men were shocked by the guy's behavior. But then, pebbles started falling from the ceiling. Zhang Shu asked in surprise. It was as if the entire hall was in motion. But then someone shouted that it was collapsing. Everyone immediately ran out, shouting that they should leave quickly. The entire hall collapsed, leaving behind ruins. The chairman thought about what the hell was going on. He looked at the surprised Zhang Huang and thought there, others either get approval or not, and here even the Confucius statue has been destroyed. And that s not all. The entire Feng Shu Hall has collapsed. Really? The others were thinking about Confucius being a great man. Someone who was respected by all people, it was all because of Zhang. Can't he show a little respect? Is he out of his mind? This is unacceptable. It's beyond their comprehension. And the guy innocently asked, did that mean he had gotten a confession? Zhang Shu looked at him shockedly. The others were thinking, what the hell else is a confession? He dared to shatter part of the sacred statue and the entire Feng Shu Hall was now in ruins. And all he's thinking about is confession? The chairman replied to the guy that he couldn't say if it could be considered a confession. Zhang thought about not being recognized or acknowledged, but what did the fall of that statue mean? Perhaps the one was just taking revenge on him for refusing to become his disciple. Zhang Shu told everyone not to tell anyone about what happened here. The men agreed with him. And then the man awkwardly added that it was fine even if the man didn't receive recognition. They had become second-rank grandmasters, and he should tell them about his duties. The man said that to teach is to instruct and dispel all doubts. He as grandmaster was now responsible for this. Confucius founded the Hall of Grandmasters and labored for its glorious name. It all had one goal, to make people better. The boys asked at the same time, what is doing better? The chairman replied that was correct. They think they are living in peaceful times when every profession is respected and needed. But in fact, it has not always been so. He told me that at the time Confucius lived, humans were not the only creatures on the continent. There was another powerful race, an alien race. He added that they were beings with incredible strength. Each of them was born with strength above rank nine. And as soon as a person fell exactly into their eyes, he immediately stopped being their slave. He added that eventually Confucius led humanity and together they managed to destroy those creatures. In order to develop people's strength, he founded the Grandmaster's Hall and trained absolutely everyone who wished to do so. All of this was done so that people would become stronger and be able to defend themselves. Zhang thought in surprise as he read many books, but none of them had the slightest mention of this. Who would have thought that once upon a time, there could have been such races that were already born with such strength? Jiang Shu said that the reason why Confucians did not recognize the Master of Poisons was because they were on the side of those creatures back then. Zhang Huang thought to himself, This is not surprising. Poison masters are indeed frightening, but they are not reckless, so there is no need to constantly avoid them. So this is all because of what happened back then. 
Let the hatred fade over time, but habits are pretty hard to change. That's why they have what they have now. Zhang Shu told the guys that they were both rank two grandmasters now. This was all in the past. They've been dealt with long ago, so there's no need to worry. Even though those creatures may no longer pose a threat to them, but the traditions of grandmasters are passed down from generation to generation. And as long as they are one, they must fulfill their duties, follow the rules, and make people better. The man added that it was because of the knowledge they passed on to the people that the grandmasters had a high and respected position in society. If he finds out that any of them are breaking the rules or behaving inappropriately, he doesn't even have to do anything about it. The other hailmasters halls will take action and they will be off the board. The man then said that was all he wanted to say. He motioned for them to go to the living room. He would introduce the name of Grandmasters Sue and Lin. As they were about to leave, yellow energy appeared around the statue. A few moments later, she was vaporized. Meanwhile, in the International Grandmaster Hall Alliance, the head of the International Alliance Hall of Masters, 4th rank Grandmaster Kang Gantan, said that he thought everyone present was aware of the incident. He hoped that they would all make their best efforts, but one of the elders told the chapter not to worry. They would do their best to find worthy ones. They wouldn't tarnish the reputation of the International Alliance Hall of Masters. Another said that Grandmaster Su and Lin had heard about some genius appearing in Xuanyuan. They had gone there a couple days ago. The former added that elders Bai and Lu had said something similar about the Qiwan Kingdom. They've been there for about a week now. The head replied that that was fine. We need to prepare and keep an eye on the situation. They had been going through hard times, but now it was time to show everyone what their grandmasters could do. But then there was a ringing sound. The head stood up and asked, what is it? One of the elders said, it's from Feng Shou Hall. Kang Gantang said, we need to find out soon. Meanwhile, in the Feng Shu Hall, the head asked, shocked, was that a sign that they had gotten a waiver? The elder asked, what was he talking about? The head explained that after successfully passing the exam, grandmasters try to get recognition from the ancestors. It is a great honor. They are all aware of the fact that every teacher can choose a student and every student can choose a teacher. But the man added that since a grandmaster could recognize an apprentice, he could also be refused. The elder asked, shocked, that someone could refuse to accept recognition. Not only is it a great honor, but it's also an opportunity to gain an incredible aura, which will help in further developing one's abilities. Who in their right mind would refuse something like this? Kang Gantang frowned his eyebrows and said, Absorbing this aura actually means inheriting the ideas and ideals of an elder. It makes you his disciple. And as they all know, inheriting the ideas and ideals of an elder comes along with inheriting all the consequences that come with it. And only when there is total commitment on the other side can this process be considered complete. And some genius simply refused to accept the offer of friendship and cooperation with an elder. All the elders sadly lowered their heads, saying that they could all only dream of being recognized by the ancestors and someone just refused so easily. How could this happen? The head said that even though they are just plaques, they are a piece of their knowledge and the meaning of their life's work. Of course they will be upset if they get rejected. That's what happens when ancestors get rejected. He had only read about it in books. Who would have thought it was actually possible? They watched as the plaques buzzed. The head added that the most important thing is that all the plaques are mourning, which means that all the elders recognize the same person. And in the end, Everyone got rejected. The elders wondered, how could one receive recognition from so many ancestors? How is it possible? In the history of the Alliance, the most famous genius Jiang Zijie had been recognized by seven ancestors. Who is it? Gaining recognition from all the ancestors and denying them. The head ordered that they be made aware of what had happened. It definitely happened within the Alliance. Otherwise, nothing like this would have happened. A genius who has been recognized by all the elders. If they manage to get their hands on him, it'll create a sensation. But then they noticed that the largest sign also hummed. The head asked in shock that did Confucius also receive a rejection. The other elders were even more surprised. Zhang asked whether or not it was definitely or not a big deal. He was told that the city's master should look at the world more broadly, understand not only the form, but also the essence of things. Respect and memory are warm in their hearts, not on these plaques. Moving plaques is a bad sign in itself. So why do they always wait for them with bated breath? Let him not worry. The Grand Master Hall knows how to reconstruct plaques. Very soon, everything will be reconstructed. Zhang Huang asked in surprise. Not the form, but the meaning. The guy thought to himself that it sounds reasonable. All the Grand Masters he knows don't care about their status. They are just like the most ordinary people. If something is right, they'll admit it. If false, they'll enter into a discussion. 
But then the guy thought about the fact that Grandmaster Yang Huang, whose identity he had used, was some kind of show-off. Should he choose something less flashy? When they were already in the living room, Zhang Shu told the guys that it was about time to introduce them to them. These are the rank four Grandmasters from the Alliance, Grandmaster Su and Grandmaster Lin. The guys immediately shockedly asked that they were rank four, and Su Fan told them that they were both very talented, so very soon they too would become rank four Grandmasters. There's no need for formalities. And then the man asked Grandmaster Zhang that he had a small request. Was it convenient for him to hear it now? The boy said yes. The man said he had heard that Grandmaster Yang was now in Wan Cheng. Could they meet him? Zhang asked fearfully. What did the man want to meet Grandmaster Yang? And he thought to himself, that's who he is, right? Bleeding sweat, the boy thought about the fact that they wanted to meet him. What should he do? What did it cost him to fool Zhang Shu? On the other hand, they're just rank four Grandmasters. It shouldn't be that difficult. He's afraid that even if he uses his private, they will still guess. That's not a good thing. Su Fan asked the guy, what's wrong? Is there some kind of problem? The guy awkwardly replied that there wasn't. That one is constantly on the road. Even he doesn't know when he will be here. Awkwardly scratching the back of his head, the guy replied that as soon as the man made himself known, he would let them know immediately. The man smiled and thanked him for his help. And then Su Fan said that since the exam has been successfully passed, he will get straight to the point. They are here because Grandmaster Zhang S. results are astonishing. They decided to see for themselves. There's one more thing. They might need their help. Zhang Shu replied that if Grandmaster Su needed help, they would definitely help him if it was within their power. The man thanked and said that even if they knew nothing about the Alliance's status on the continent, he thought they had at least heard mention of something like this. The man said that they must be familiar with the classification of kingdoms, kingdoms without rank, kingdoms of second rank, kingdom of first rank, and titled kingdoms. The kingdom of Tianwu is a kingdom of the first rank, but it is also a vassal state of the titled state of Xuanyuan. And all 142 kingdoms that have the same status as Xuanyuan are under the administration of the Alliance. Many kingdoms are accountable to the Alliance, so at first glance it seems to be a large organization, but in the vastness of the entire continent, it is only a drop in the ocean. There are about a thousand kingdoms of similar power on the continent, such as their neighbors the Mingxia Empire and the Huanghai Empire. There are also powerful third-rank families, such as the Luosha clan, Hanzi clan, and others. Let alliance sound pretty loud, but in reality the kingdom acts alone, which makes them much weaker. For example, the Mingxia Empire. Regardless of the number of masters, economically they are far more advanced than them. The Liu and Luo clans have quite a few geniuses. Their numbers are much higher than theirs. Of course, they all have their own grandmaster halls, which are controlled by the headquarters. And in order to determine the best and develop the abilities of the Grandmasters, the Alliance and 27 other comparable alliances hold a Grandmaster competition. Every 30 years, Grandmasters under the age of 30 are eligible to participate. The winner receives generous rewards. The man said that there were a total of 77 competitions, and the Grandmasters of the Alliance always ended up at the bottom of the standings. So now with the change in leadership, their new chairman wants to change things. They have to watch the kingdoms. Look for talent and nurture it. Zhang Shu realized that it was so that they could participate in the competition that would take place in three months. Su Fan said, Grandmaster Zhang has already achieved incredible results at this age, setting more and more records for the Grandmaster Hall. There is incredible potential in him. This is the first time the Alliance is facing something like this, so they want to invite him to participate. Zhang Shu and Zhang Huang looked at each other awkwardly, and Su Fan told the guy that they were not asking for an immediate answer from him. He has two days to think about it. He can also discuss everything with his master, so they will wait for his answer. The guy smiled awkwardly and said that he needed to think about it. He thought about the fact that this was the first time he had heard of something like this. Moreover, he didn't even know how and what was going on, so he should be cautious and not agree right away. His main goal is to become a ninth rank Grand Master before the age of 30, so the rest is not that important to him right now. Zhang said that if that was the end of it, he should leave. The men agreed with him, and Ling Yu Hong told the guy to tell his teacher that they would really like to have the opportunity to meet them. Zhang awkwardly added that as soon as he returned, he would let them know right away. The men thanked. Zhang awkwardly thought there that these two were quite serious, so it probably wouldn't work to just forget about it. He'll have to use the old methods, but he doesn't know how well that will work when he has fourth-rank grandmasters in front of him. Zhang's disciples met him in the courtyard and bowed to him. He looked at them angrily and said that when they returned, they would be in trouble. 
Zhang then told Lu Chun and Mu Xueqing to both follow him as well. Walking behind the teacher, Yuan Tao asked that was the teacher really going to leave them. Zhang Yang told him not to say such a thing. Wang Yin, drenched in tears, asked what to do. They arrived at Zhang Huan's residence. Sitting at the table, Zhang shouted that it didn't matter at all if Grandmaster Liu was him or anyone else. He was a teacher first and foremost, which meant that they should at least respect him. Because of some petty thing, they decided to use poison. How dare they? The three disciples kneeled down. Yuan Tao told the teacher that they had made a mistake. Zhen Yang apologized, saying that they would never again. Zhang asked, never what? They dared to put poison in Grandmaster's tea, too, should he expect them in the future. He, Zhang Huang, had never had such disciples and never would. But then Zhao Yao and Yang Li kneeled down as well. The girl asked that the man didn't do that. They didn't mean any harm after all. The boy asked that the man give them another chance. Wang Ying shouted out that they had made a terrible mistake, but Zhang stood up and told them to stay where they were. When they realize what they have done, then they will speak for themselves. He forbids them to help them. He then looked at Lu Chong and Mu Xueqing, that they had a teacher-disciple relationship when he had to hide his true identity. Now that Lu Chong was over, their relationship was also over. He will show them the exercises that they can use to reach the eighth rank, so that's it. The girl wanted to object to something, but Zhang raised his hand, stopping her. He said that all good things come to an end sometime. Even if they were no longer his students, they should continue to train hard. Let them not slack off on their work. The girl said she wanted to follow him. Zhang Huan said that she was the daughter of Alchemist Mu. How is she going to fulfill her duty if she decides to follow him? The girl wanted to reply something again, but the teacher said that if she really wanted to follow him, let her settle things with Alchemist Mu. Only after that could she come. Let her not worry. He would be easy to find now. The girl kneeled down, thanking her teacher for his help and guidance. Another golden book appeared here. Zhang Huang thought of the one who had guided her, teaching her swordsmanship and various techniques. Who would have thought that now that it was time to temporarily separate, he would receive another golden book after her sincere words of gratitude. Then Lu Chong got down on one knee and told the master that he was all alone in this world, and he would follow him anywhere. Zhang thought about the fact that with the guy's temperament, no amount of argument seemed to help. He made up his mind. Grandmaster Liu came into the room to ask what was wrong with the disciples. Zhang Huang said that their strength had increased significantly in a short period of time, so they were acting too impulsively, so let them stand for a while. It would help them cool their heads and be more judicious. The man thought that as teachers, they as teachers should not only help their students become stronger, but also improve mentally. If one were to compare cultivation to construction, mentality was the framework of the entire building. Without having this base, it doesn't matter at all how many materials one has or what outstanding skills one possesses. A tall and sturdy house cannot be built. It punishes them, but it is also a great opportunity to teach them a great lesson. You can't take the fish out of the pond without labor. When he first met him, he was still so immature, but now he behaves like a true teacher. The man hoped those would realize it was all for them. The next day came. Zhang Huang thought about the fact that for his plan to fool the two rank four grandmasters to work, he would need a lot of knowledge. Since he couldn't do anything about it, he would have to come up with some sort of solution. He used the golden book, folded it, and studied it. In the next instant, he collapsed without strength, thinking that this knowledge had instantly downloaded his brain. Meanwhile, in the backyard of the medic guild, someone asked the healer Chung Feng if it could be cured. Standing by the bed on which the man was lying, the doctor replied that it had done its best. This eye thing is too strong, it can't do anything. Then the man suggested something, and the other asked, What? Cheng Feng said that only if Chairman Liu, or rather Master Zhang, would personally take it on. He has managed to cure many diseases that were previously considered incurable. His skills are truly amazing. He might be able to do something about it. The man irritably said that he was poisoned by one of Zhang Huan's disciples. He must be in cahoots with the masters of the poison hall. The doctor said it's nothing, so he's not making it up. That famous internet master is also the guild's greatest healer. Why would he do something like that? The man recalled the moment when Liao Shun was following Zhang Huang's orders. He asked, Is this nonsense? Everyone had seen it with their own eyes. There could be no mistake. Chairman, how is that possible? How could a man who is in cahoots with the poison hall even become chairman? The man added that, what's more, he was sure the man wasn't looking at anything in the medicine business. He had planned it all out, just prepared in advance. Otherwise, how else to even solve so many cases that everyone thought were hopeless? A cry was heard in the corridor that such a man was unworthy to hold the office of chairman or medics. 
He hoped that justice would prevail. Let them call a general meeting of the healers and strip him of that status. He cannot be allowed to continue to deceive the people. But then a servant came running to them, telling the healer Chung Feng and Shi Shunda that there was a new message on the wall. The healers looked at the guy and Xi Shunda asked that last answer was wrong. The man replied that there was no mention of it. They are inviting him to be the chairman of the Alliance's medic guild. As for his level, they will conduct a separate test. Chung Feng shockedly asked, those invites to become the chairman of the Alliance's medic guild. Zi Shunda clutched his heart thinking about what was going on. He had just said that he wasn't worthy of being the chairman, and now the Alliance medics themselves wanted him as their leader. What's going on here? This is some kind of collective divorce. Meanwhile, in the Grandmaster's Hall, Deputy Guan reported that the Feng Shu Hall had been completely restored. The head said that it was excellent. Su Fan said, The Confucius statue came into motion, as well as all the tablets. Nothing like this had ever happened anywhere before. He asked Grandmaster Lin if he had figured out what was wrong. The man added that he had previously thought that it might have been because Grandmaster Zhang had asked for recognition. However, a ninth-rank Grandmaster once hoped to become a disciple of Confucius, but the latter had rejected him, so a second-rank Grandmaster was an impossibility. Lin Yuai Han said, There is no need to rush. They may not understand what happened yet, but the head should know. They should go back and inquire about it at the headquarters. But then on the wall next to them, they saw a message from headquarters. The writing was on the wall that the elders had been rejected and all the plaques. This happened somewhere within the Alliance two days ago. Moreover, Confucius himself had been rejected and his statue had been destroyed. Perhaps they something like that could have triggered the fall of the entire Feng Shu Hall. If they were the sharer of something like that, have them reported immediately. Su Fan, that after passing the examination and someone rejected repeated, the deputy asked, Is there really such a person? Zhang Shu said that to be recognized by the elders is the greatest honor. Ling Yu Hang asked who could do such a thing, but then the man hesitated and said that it couldn't be. It said that it should be reported if there was a fall of the Fenchi Hall. It collapsed here, didn't it? Su Fan said that two days ago, between 7 and 9 p.m., must have been the time when Master Zhang worshipped the ancestors. Yu Hang replied that yes, what happened to the statue and to Feng Shou Hall was because of someone who rejected the elders. The men looked at each other, realizing that it was Grandmaster Zhang. Su Fan asked, how is this possible? Zhang Shu said that it must be. Yu Hang asked what? The man said it was two days ago when the plaques fell down and the Confucius statue came into motion. Su Fang asked, if all the tablets came into motion, is it the chosen Grandmaster? Does that mean that Confucius is willing to accept the chosen one as a disciple? And Yu Hong added in surprise that most importantly, the latter rejected the offer. Su Fan said that to reject the proposal of the elders, and moreover the proposal of Confucius himself, is inconceivable. The other said that there could be no doubt about it. The man added that it was definitely Zhang Huang. Yu Han said that he hoped that they could find someone capable here, but he never would have thought that they would only find someone with strength and abilities beyond their comprehension. Su Fan agreed with him. Yu Hong said that it should be reported right away. The chairman should personally meet him. But Jiang Shu is at Master Lin's place. That maybe we shouldn't be in such a hurry. The one asked why. Jiang Shu said that the appearance of the elected grandmaster was shocking even to them. If this news leaked out, he was afraid there would be a lot of trouble. Moreover, the fact that someone had turned down Confucius himself was no reason to be proud. He had already given orders to keep quiet about it. If they talk about it now, Su Fan thought about it and said to Chairman Jiang is right. They should report this to the chairman personal. The less people know about it, the better. Lin Yuhang said that the chosen grandmaster who had received the offer to become Confucius's disciple. Now that they found out about it, they should definitely pay him a visit. Su Fan said that was true, however. They should pay Grandmaster Yang a visit first. Agreed that the one who was able to train the grandmaster that became the chosen one was the priority right now. Just how great was his power? Su Fan added that if they were to be honored with even a one-minute lecture, he was sure their strength would increase significantly without much effort on their part. Meanwhile, Mo Hong Yi was walking down the street, thinking that if Grandmaster Lin or Grandmaster Su accepted him as a disciple, he would become a disciple of the fourth-ranked Grandmaster himself. Then perhaps he would be able to catch up with Zhang Huan, or even surpass him. When the guy reached the door, he was told that Grandmaster Su and Lin had left early in the morning. The guy asked if he knew where they had gone. He replied that the two had gone to visit Grandmaster Zhang. He could tell them that he had stopped by, but the guy said he didn't need to and thanked him for the offer. He would try to catch them himself. 
and Zhang Huang thought that this time the accumulated knowledge was too much, so he was out for quite a long period of time. The guy sat on the bed. Thinking about that, however, martial arts, alchemy, animal taming, calligraphy and painting, healing, guard mastery, poisons. All this knowledge was now organized in his head and became his. This book of the heavenly path is truly impressive. He knew that the Heaven's Path book materialized from the true gratitude of the disciples was incredible, but he still can't stop being pleasantly surprised every time he uses it. But then he furrowed his eyebrows, think increasing his mental power by 5.0, and still gaining all that knowledge. He thinks that he can get even more than that. Looks like it wouldn't hurt to take on more students from now on. That way he can get more books as well. But then Sun Chun came to him, the young master that they wanted to meet him. They waited outside until the morning. The boy asked who was there. The butler said that it was the people from the Grandmaster Hall, Su Fan and Lin Yuhang. Zhang Huang was immediately taken aback. He was thinking about Grandmaster Su and Grandmaster Lin. But he had told them that once Grandmaster Yang was here, he would inform them, right? So why are they here? He's not prepared for this visit. The guy jumped up asking where they were now. In the living room or the meeting room? Did Sun Qian ask for the living room? The meeting room? They told you they came to visit Grandmaster Yang, but they came completely empty-handed. It's ridiculous, such rude people. He just told them to wait outside. If they weren't Grandmasters, he would have sent them away long ago. What is this? No manners at all. And Zhang frightenedly thought, does he even know who these two are? How could he talk like that? How did he have the misfortune to hire such a horrible manager? Two rank four Grandmasters, and he made them wait outside all this time. Zhang ordered him to let them in immediately. He thought about the fact that he had to teach him some manners, otherwise he would be killed because of him one day. Meanwhile, Mo Hong Yi stood around the corner and watched Grandmaster Su and Grandmaster Lin. Why did they spend all morning here? Why haven't they gone inside yet? Basically thought about the fact that they are, after all, fourth-rank Grandmasters, multi-respected Grandmasters who are famous within the entire alliance. Even King Xuan Yuan would be obligated to treat them with the respect they deserve. But they are taking this attitude. What's going on? But then Sun Qian opened the gate, apologizing for such a long wait. He informed them that the master had just returned, and then asked them to pass through. He also asked them to bear in mind that the master didn't like noise. The men replied that they would be quiet. The prince shopped, thinking about what was even going on. People of such status and still have to wait outside, and they've been waiting all morning. After escorting the men into the living room, the butler introduced his master, Master Yang, to them. The men bowed to him in greeting. Examining the man in front of him, Su Fan mentally told his comrade that this person's body structure was somewhat unnatural. Obviously, someone is just pretending to be him. Even if he is a so-called genius, no matter how naturally talented a person is, he must nurture his abilities. At a young age, the potential is limited. Lin Yu Hung said that this Grandmaster Yang looks relatively young. However, he can't recognize his true strength. Zhang put his mug on the table and asked if they were done looking at him. He realized that they seemed to have figured out his disguise. Su Fan said that they had heard a lot about him and his accomplishments. He also managed to nurture a disciple like Grandmaster Zhang. It was a simple curiosity. They didn't want to seem rude, let him forgive them. Symbols appeared in the guy's pupils and he grimly replied that it was fine. When the men saw it, they realized that it was an eye of insight. They thought it was an incredible ability that only sixth-rank Grandmasters could obtain. Su Fan mentally asked his friend, could it be that he was a sixth-rank grandmaster or even higher? Yuhan replied that if that was the case, then this kind of treatment was justified. The guy asked the grandmasters why they, the fourth-ranked grandmasters, were so eager to meet him. Guy thought to himself that, of course, showing them the eye of insight was the right thing to do. Ling Yuhang said that the thing is that they have a proposal for Grandmaster Zhang, but they would like to discuss it with him first. Su Fan said that it's about the grandmaster competition. The former added that Master Zhang was not yet 20, but he definitely had talent. If he participated in the competition, he would be able to become famous all over the world. Zhang thought that those were so insistent on meeting with Grandmaster Yang because of something more important. It seemed like they were really taking his phrase that he needed to discuss the matter with Master first seriously. But the guy looked at them sternly, asking that could his student really only make a name for himself in this way. The men were confused and Yuhan said they didn't mean it at all. Zhang stood up and said that if this was the only thing they wanted to discuss, they could be free to go. Whether Zhang Huang will participate in the competition is his personal decision. He is not going to influence him in any way. He is his mentor, not his babysitter. He will decide for himself. Yu Hang replied that they had acted rashly. 
but then Sufan said that they were finding it difficult to practice lately, so since they were lucky enough to meet Grandmaster Yang today, they hoped that he would be able to guide them in the right direction. Yu Han looked at his comrade excitedly, and then the man mentally told him that it would probably only anger him even more. The man replied that right in front of them was a Grandmaster of the sixth rank or even higher. This might be their first and last chance to meet a Grandmaster of that rank. If they didn't take this opportunity, they would definitely regret it later. John grudgingly asked, what was the problem? And he himself thought about the fact that he had already said goodbye, right? These people really don't understand when to stop. Su Fan said that he was currently practicing the small pure yang methods. Every time he reached the seventh phase, he felt as if his body was being torn to pieces and he could no longer continue. Zhang Huang thought that although he had managed to gather a great deal of knowledge from all over Qianwu, he had never heard of anything like this, let alone what phases this technique was divided into. But the guy told him to demonstrate for him. The man agreed. He then forces himself into a lotus pose on the floor. The man began to make actions with his hands, releasing his power. Zhang's eyes widened in surprise, and he thought to himself that as expected of a fourth-rank master, this is impressive. He can't figure out what the other one is doing can only refer to the Library of the Heavenly Path. There he learned that Su Fan, an initial stage fourth ranked Grandmaster, a transcendent mortal, and an elder of the Alliance Grandmaster Hall. Techniques practiced, small purist Yang. He then recognized his weaknesses, a guide to the Library of Heaven's Way. For Masters of the Ninth Rank and above, the concept of transcendence is applied, which demonstrates the fact that the Master has reached his limit of power in the mortal world. It is then left to leave the mundane world and turn to the eight spirits. This means that Master Su Fang's strength has already gone beyond the ninth rank. Regardless of his physical elemental characteristics, he had reached a very high level. It could be compared to the boundary between real and spirit weapons. Zhang said that was enough. The man stopped and Yu Hang asked if the man had already found a solution. Zhang replied that if he wanted to go to the eighth phase, he should just follow his instructions. He should not resist and should not hesitate. The man said he's been trying to do this for five years, so he's willing to do anything. Zhang Huang said that it was great. He can start right now. Once he reaches the seventh phase, he will help him break through further. The one should close his eyes, ask no questions, and give himself wholeheartedly to the process. He must do it in a horseman's stance. The man agreed, but it was the stance that doubted him. Zhang asked him if he needed help. The man asked if it would help, but after that he immediately went into a stand. Yu Hang thought to himself, Shouldn't everything be under his guidance? How could this possibly help? Zhang mentally told the man to just follow his instruction and wait. Su Fan said that the seventh phase had begun. Zhang Huang said that it was time to start. Now we need to do the following. The man tensed up, veins swelling on his forehead. Ling Yu Hang asked fearfully, Is it true? But Su Fan, agonizing, said to make them faster. He wouldn't last long. Yu Hang walked up to Grandmaster Su and apologized. He didn't understand why. But in the next instant, the man kicked him in the groin. Su Fan crouched down in pain. Angry, he thought. What had he done to offend him to do something like that? To do it at such a crucial moment. But Yu Han didn't stop and hit the man in the head. Su Fan couldn't stand it. Got angry and said that he would answer for it. In the next instant, the man burst through. Reaching the eighth phase of the small purest yang phase. Ling Yu Hang wondered in surprise. Did it work? Was it really that easy? Calmly, the man looked at his fists. Surprised to think that the chairman and fifth-rank grandmasters couldn't help him. All it took was a couple of blows. Su Fan fell to his knees, thanking the guy for his help. Zhang Huang asked if he understood what had happened. The men looked at each other awkwardly, and Su Fan asked to enlighten them. Zhang began to explain that he was practicing the small purest yang, with yang energy circulating in his body. Everything matched, and there shouldn't be any problems. Under normal circumstances, he should have made a breakthrough to the eighth phase almost immediately. After listening to everything, the men thought about the fact that he was able to see the essence of the problem so clearly. Master Yang is simply incredible. The Grandmaster who had an eye of insight couldn't have expected anything less. Zhang Huang said that it would take a little time to recover. Those blows must have been quite painful. And Su Fan awkwardly asked the Grandmaster that he had successfully overcome this phase now. But what should he do if he wanted to break through to the ninth phase as well? and Ling Yu Hong irritably thought about how impudence was second happiness. After all, he hadn't even asked his question, and Zhang Huang replied that it was simple. He should use the same method. It won't work once. Let him try it twice. Doesn't work the second time. Try a third time. If that doesn't work, then he should try ten. More strokes, more likely to awaken the right energy. Hearing this, the man was shocked. 
A girl entered the Lin family's courtyard and saw the ruins. She ordered that her father and brother be found now. If anything happened to them while she was away, she would level the entire kingdom. The girl who was wearing the cape irritatedly said that she would kill Liu Cheng. It wasn't long before a servant informed the princess that the head of the family and the young master were inside. Lin Roshan sat in the corner next to her son who was unconscious. He looked at Lun Er fearfully. The man asked the girl to avenge them. She ran up to him, asking him what had happened here. The man said in a frightened voice that it was Liu Cheng, or rather the second-ranked grandmaster, Zhang Huang. The escaped bastard of the Chu family is his disciple. The girl fiercely ordered Commander Liang to go to the Grandmaster Hall and detain him. She would show the world by his example what happens to those who dared to go against the Lin family. But Commander Liang asked the princess to think it over carefully. A second-rank Grandmaster is nothing to Xuanyuan, but he is still a Grandmaster, which means he is under the patronage of the Grandmaster Hall. But the girl shouted that he had destroyed her family, injured her father and brother. Even if all the Grandmasters stand in his defense, she will never accept it. Hal Head Luo is a good friend of the prince. Once they explain everything, there will be no problem with this. The girl's face became frantic, and she added that anyway, that some unknown Grandmaster from a small state. She could kill him without any repercussions. Would Head Luo decide to go against the royal family over such a small thing? The commander obeyed, but Lin Ruoshin told him to wait. He will go with him because he wants to see him die with his own eyes and he's not in the Grandmaster Hall right now. The man said that the one at the residence not far from here hasn't shown up since yesterday. He hopes that Commander Liang can capture him and bring him here. He will torture him long and slowly. As she sat on the eagle, the princess shouted that today would be the end of Zhang Huan. Meanwhile, in the backyard of the royal palace, the king exclaimed that it was Commander Liang of Xuanyuan. Things are not good. The man added fearfully, The princess of the Lin family is here. It's all over because that ninth rank master. Mo Yu asked that Liang Qingming was a late stage master of the ninth rank, right? Mo Tianxue replied that yes. Who would have thought that the princess would have the commander of the Xuanyuan royal guards under her command? What to do? The king clutched his head, thinking about how incredibly strong he was. Even their guardian is no match for him. Their kingdom was doomed. The man took his daughter's hand, telling her to take the ring and run away. Even if the kingdom came to an end today, as long as she lived, there would still be hope for the future. Holding the green ring in her hand, the girl thought about how Lin Lun had destroyed the entire Chu family without even having an objective reason to do so. What would happen now that such a thing had happened to her family? Knowing her character, that one would definitely take after the royal family once she was done with Grandmaster Zhang. Leaving the man told her to go and he would stay here. If she really decided to go against them, it was his duty to protect the kingdom until his last breath. The princess looked fearfully at her father. The guy went outside the gate. Taking out a loudspeaker, he shouted loudly, What the hell is this? Even if God awarded them with a loud voice, it doesn't mean they can show off their abilities here. Let them show respect and wait quietly if life was precious. Lin Ruoshan was surprised to think that this butler was only a fourth-rank master but dares to behave like this. And Liang Qingming irritably said counting to three, Let Zhang Huang show himself now otherwise. But the man couldn't finish because the guy asked, Is he counting to three? Then let him do it quickly and don't complain later. He had warned him. Those must be the last three words he would ever say in his life. The man said that he was the commander of the Xuanyuan royal guards, and the man was allowing himself to make such remarks about him. Since he thought he could insult him, then let him not accuse him of being ruthless. Just then, Grandmaster Yang, Su Fan, and Lin Yu Hong came out from behind the gate. Su Fan asked, What's going on? What's all the commotion from early in the morning? Sun Qian reported that the man said that he wanted to see Young Master immediately. Unheard of impertinence showing up here like this and demanding to see Young Master whenever he wants. He had already asked him to leave. Zhang replied that all right, that was correct. But Commander Liang rushed to the attack, correct that since they were so anxious to die, he would fulfill their wish. The man attacked from the bird using a diamond hand. Zhang turned to Su saying that he was leaving it on him, and it wouldn't hurt to bring the bird down to the ground. He obeyed. Su Fan started to use force, saying, This is an outrage. With one hand, he was able to block the attack and hit his opponent in return. Commander Liang's mouth bled and he thought in surprise, This transcendent mortal. Without stopping, Su Fan ordered him to descend. The man twisted his hand, causing the bird to flip over and all the passengers fell out. They fell to the ground with a clatter. Zhang shockingly thought that this was the true power of transcendent mortals. Everyone slowly began to rise from the ground. Lin Lun then shouted to Commander Liang, Ask him what he is waiting for. Let him kill them. Su Fan sternly asked, What do they want to kill? Liang Qingming, 
fearfully asked the elder to give him a moment, and the princess shouted, Why is the latter so scared? This is just some first-ranked kingdom grandmaster. What can he even do? Su Fan got angry, asked how dare she insult the grandmasters. He would make her shut up. The commander approached the girl. The one asked in surprise, shutting up. What is the one going to do? But in the next instant, the man slapped the princess. But it didn't end there because the man continued to drink the girl's face. Unable to answer, the girl thought about the fact that they would pay for such humiliation with their lives. Zhang Huang said that was enough. The men thought that Master Yang was so magnanimous and fair. If someone else dared to insult Grandmaster, he wouldn't get away with it so easily. The man ordered Sun Chang to get Lu Chun. He knows what to do with this woman. Lu Chong soon came in and bowed to the master. Zhang told the guy that this is Lin Lan's sister, the princess of the Lin family. He is leaving her to him. The guy thanked the master. The girl was sitting on the ground with a puffy face, and when the guy started to walk towards her, she asked, What is he doing? She is the princess of Xuan Yuan. If he so much as laid a finger on her, she will destroy his entire family. But the guy kicked her in the face, telling her to destroy herself. While continuing it, and Zhang thought about teaching Lu Chun a couple techniques. Finished, the lad turned to the master, thanking him and here for this opportunity. Zhang turned to Su Fang, ordering him to get rid of them to keep their feet out of their kingdom. Afterward, they sat in the living room, sipping her tea. Zhang Huang thought there. It was fortunate that Grandmaster Su and the others were there. He was able to nullify a late-stage ninth-ranked master's attack with just one hand. His strength is very impressive. After familiarizing himself with the information from the Heaven's Path library, he knew that he was very strong, but he didn't expect him to be this powerful. Su Fan asked Master Yang, Where is Grandmaster Zhang? Could he talk to him about the Grandmaster competition? Zhang replied that he was very busy perfecting his skills right now. The men thought that in that case it was no wonder the man didn't show up even when they had made so much noise. The man asked, What about the contest? Zhang said that he had already answered their question. Even if he is his teacher, the decision will be made by him personally. Su Fan said that the conditions I every year are negotiated by eminent grandmasters from all over the world. There are no definite rules, but there are generous rewards. If the contestant manages to win the prize as a reward, he will not only receive spirit stones, but also the opportunity to cultivate in the secret realm. Zhang asked cheerfully, wanting the man to be more specific. Lin Yuhang said that he couldn't answer specifically, but based on the past year's awards, the contestant received a medium-rank spirit stone for first place. Zhang thought about the fact that the Qianwu kingdom was rather weak, so there weren't many records of spirit stones, moreover. There was no mention of any varieties. What do you mean by average rank? Su Fan said that now they were mostly using low-rank spiritual stones. Even though there is enough spiritual energy in them, it is not pure enough. Therefore, once one reaches a certain rank, it is quite difficult to absorb. As for the middle rank spiritual stones, they contain an order of magnitude more spiritual energy, and there are far fewer impurities. They are suitable for masters of higher ranks. Under normal circumstances, one medium rank spirit stone can be exchanged for 10,000 low rank spirit stones, but they are quite difficult to obtain. Zhang thought shockedly that he had used all sorts of tricks to get his hands on as many low rank spirit stones as possible. If he were to participate in this competition and win, he would receive one medium-ranked spiritual stone, which equated to 10,000 lower-ranked spiritual stones. Su Fan asked in surprise. Grandmaster Yang didn't know about this. Ling Yu Hung was thinking about the fact that in order to become a transgender mortal, one must absorb spiritual powers from the atmosphere, which in itself is very difficult, so there's no need for spiritual stones. All Grandmasters of the third rank and above know this. So why doesn't such an outstanding Grandmaster know about it? Holding up the cup, Zhang replied that of course he knew about it. He just remembered something. It's just an emotion. Su Fan asked again, what about participating in the competition? Zhang replied that it was a great opportunity for the younger generation to gain experience. How could he be against it? The guy calmly replied that they shouldn't worry. He would definitely agree. And he thought to himself that they were joking. 10,000 spirit stones. Who in their right mind would pass up such an opportunity? And the men thought in surprise at the fact that before it was certain that he could be said to be against it. Why did he change his mind so quickly? What is in the minds of great men they will never understand? Su Fan said that they were very grateful. And Ling Yuhang asked that, in that case, Grandmaster Zhang should report to the Alliance within three months. The man held out a plaque saying that it was a contestant token. He asked him to give it to Grandmaster Zhang. With it, he would be able to find him in the Alliance Grandmaster Hall. The man added that now that they had discussed everything, they could go back. 
they would be looking forward to his arrival at the Alliance. In the Grandmaster Hall, Zhang Xu asked what the man was saying. Did he just call Grandmaster Su by his first name? After thinking for a moment, the man added that Grandmaster Su was an outstanding Grandmaster of the fourth rank of the Alliance Grandmaster Hall. He showed Grandmaster Yang similar respect and did not react to the situation in any way. Is it possible that his strength is superior to that of a fourth-ranked Grandmaster? Master Guan said that they had already left Mr. Jiang's residence and went to the Alliance on flying beasts. The head said that, of course, they are esteemed Grandmasters. Of course, they have a lot of business and can't stay with them for long. Zhang Xu added that they should pay a visit to Grandmaster Zhang and his teacher. He wondered if they wouldn't linger in Tianwu the same way. The next day, the five students were on their knees. Zhang Huang ordered them to stand up. He informed them that he had to drop off Tianwu and head to the Alliance. He would not force them to follow him, but they all said they wanted to go with him. Zhang then asked Lu Chun what about him. The boy replied that as he had said before, his life belonged to his teacher. So wherever he followed him, he would follow him. However, before that, he must visit his ancestors. The Alliance is 10,000 kilometers away. So if he were to go that far now, not knowing when he could go back, Zhang Huang told him to do what he had to do. The guy added that if it was possible, he would like to ask him to help him take back what his ancestors left behind. He still wasn't strong enough for that. Zhang agreed and the boy thanked him. Zhang thought about the fact that he was referring to his family's treasures. Among them must be Confucius's writings. They were of little value to him, but Lu Chun's family was destroyed because of them. This is all that is left of his family. No wonder he wants to take them before he leaves. Zhang said that since they all made the decision to go with him, he should voice some rules. Teacher and students are bound by fate. Under normal circumstances, if they don't like a particular class, they can leave. They can also change the teacher. However, if they follow him, they will not have that opportunity in the future. Zhao Yao asked the master that did he really want them to become his followers. Zhang replied that was correct. And if they wish to become them, they must observe the following rules. Respect the master, follow his instructions, and never go against him. He added that what he teaches them cannot be given to a third person without his permission. Let them be patient and not offend the weak. They should be honest with everyone, stick to each other. Zhang said that if they could abide by these rules, he could accept them as followers. But if they are unable to or break any rule in the future, he, Zhang Huang, would never condone such a thing and would personally deal with the offender. All the disciples kneeled down, saying loudly that they wished to follow Grandmaster Zhang and become his followers. They would be loyal to him and would never regret their decision. Zhang said that today's Zhao Yao would be the elder sister mentor after her, Wang Yin. He added that next, Yang Li, Zheng Yang, Yuan Tao, Lu Chang, the six of them should respect each other, there should never be any strife between them. They all replied in unison that yes, 1736, Tianwu calendar. Zhao Yao, Wang Yin, Yang Li, Zhen Yang, Yuan Tao, and Lu Chang became followers of Grandmaster Zhang. Lin Lun shouted to his majesty that he should help her. She added to get back at him for what he had done. But the guy turned on her, slapping her on the cheek. As the girl fell to the floor, the blonde shouted, Did she know who she had crossed? And she still dares to talk about revenge? A genius grandmaster who set many records, and a great grandmaster from the Alliance. He added furiously that their family is obsessed with making everyone else uncomfortable. And this time it's such powerful people. What kind of revenge? No longer shouting, the man said that he suppressed the will of the ninth rank master and the lightning golden furred beast with a single movement. That man is incredibly strong. He is not something that Xuan Yuan can pull off. If he does what she asks, doesn't that mean that he will personally sign the entire kingdom's judgment? But the girl said, all that one was only a second ranked grandmaster and the one who was helping him seemed to be a fourth ranked grandmaster. The man said she knows about it and still dares to talk this nonsense. A grenade master of the fourth rank means he's a transcendent mortal. So powerful a man. He has the respect of the entire alliance, not to mention Xuan Yuan. This is not someone they can go up against. Turning away, he added that he had said it all. Let her never dare to bring it up again. But the girl told him to wait with his decision. Getting up from the floor, she asked if he knew why the Chu family was destroyed by them. The girl slyly said that she remembered perfectly well. His Majesty's wishes to join the Liu Yun sect, and if he really wants to... Chu Chong could be extremely useful. The girl added that it was now that there was nothing left of the Chu family, but it used to be incredibly powerful, especially the ancestors of the Chu family, who had luckily saved St. Ming's life. The king looked at her in surprise, and then asked what she meant to one of Confucius's 72 closest followers. The girl said that was right, and then they received a letter from Confucius himself, 
and have since passed it down from generation to generation as a family treasure. She added that what was written by Confucius is of great value. She thinks His Majesty understands it himself. If he presents it to the head of Liu Yun's sect, not only can he become a disciple, but perhaps even an elder. The man was surprised to think that such a treasure was not only hard to find in the alliance, but it was hard to tell if anything like it had survived in the surrounding countries. But the Choi family owned something like this. The man asked irritably, why hadn't she killed everyone two years ago? Why had she let that child live? Lin Lun replied that these people were quite determined and were unwilling to reveal the location of the treasure to the last, so they purposely left him alive to lead them there. But then she clenched her teeth, adding that who would have known he would be so patient? It had been over two years and he hadn't made any attempt. She'd planned to catch him and give him a good interrogation before, but who would have thought he'd find such a good teacher to stand up for him? But Commander Liang was not sure if he was a good teacher. He must have already known about the writings. Otherwise, would a second-rank grandmaster dare to go against the Lin family in the Xuanyuan kingdom? The girl exclaimed that this must be the case. Even with Grenade Master Yang's patronage, he wouldn't just insult them and disregard Xuanyuan's might. The king said that now is not the time to discuss Zhang Huan's motives. If what she says is true, the writings of Confucius himself are worth going against the entire alliance, let alone a brilliant teacher. The girl said cheerfully that she had to act as soon as possible. She had already sent people to find out what was going on. This Zhang Huang had left the Tianwu kingdom. He went to the mountains this morning. The girl added that the alliance was in the south, but he also went to the southwest. She could assume that the one went to get the treasure. If they present it to the alliance, it would be quite difficult for them to get it. The king said that if the letter got to the alliance, it really wouldn't be that easy to get it. But his teacher and those two grandmasters. But Commander Liang told his highness not to worry. His men had already reported that Grandmaster Su and the other one that was with them had left yesterday. Even Grandmaster Yang wasn't with him since this morning. Zhang Huan had only taken a couple of disciples with him. The prince said that it was quite dangerous in the Tianwu Mountains. If masters who hadn't reached rank 9 went there, they would die in a matter of minutes. So if they take proper advantage of the situation, no one would ever know the true reason for what happened. The man smirked, saying that since the heavens favored them, they would just kill them together. Zhang Huang asked unhappily, Why is she here? Mo Yu replied that she also wanted to watch the Grandmaster competition. Why can't she go? With the whole crowd they walked through the forest, and the princess added that even if they couldn't be anything more to each other, they were still friends. The girl added that it was okay that he hadn't warned her that he was going to go to the Alliance, but just leaving like that, and without saying a word, was too much. Fortunately, she is quite perceptive, and so riding the green kite, she managed to keep up with him. Jiang didn't want to argue, so he said that he could take her as well. Lu Chong then approached the teacher and said that in order to prevent this letter from falling into the wrong hands, his ancestors had hidden it in the family residence in this mountain range. He had only heard its approximate location from his father, so he couldn't be sure. Zhang said with a smile that it was okay. They would find it now. He thought about the treasure that his family had died defending. We have to find it. But surveying the valley from the hill, he wondered how they could find him in such a vast area. Mo Yu said sadly, finding something they don't even know what it looks like would take a year. But then Zhang Huan said that he had an idea. It should definitely work. On a piece of paper he drew an arrow, and then started spinning around in different directions, asking where was the residence of the Lu Chun family. Mo Yu grudgingly told him to put in at least a little more effort if he wanted them to believe it. But then, placing his foot on the rock, Zhang extended his finger forward that they were there. The princess asked if he was sure that was a reliable way. The guy replied that of course it was. This method is based on the relationship between heaven and earth, celestial luminaries, mountain ranges and lakes, as well as his understanding of the processes occurring in nature. Even treasure can be searched for in this way, not to mention direction. And Zhang himself was thinking about the heavenly path library being able to point out his mistakes. It didn't matter that he didn't know the right direction. He just needed to draw it. That way, relying on his inner senses, he would be able to figure out which direction to take and lead them to the right place. Zhao Yao exclaimed that as expected of a teacher. Sun Qian added that less was not expected of him. Was Mo Yu thinking about the heaven and earth, the heavenly luminary mountain ranges and lakes? It's not like she doesn't know where to go, so she'll listen to him. Zhang told the students that they would stay here with Sun Qian. Mo Yu said she wanted to go too. Zhang replied that it was as she wished. For a while they approached an old house. Lu Chun said it was here, it's just like father said. And Mo Yu was surprised and thought about the fact that they really found her. How did he do that? 
Zhang wanted to move forward, but his disciple stopped him, asking him to wait. He had been warned that there was an incredibly dangerous hidden array here. His ancestors had set it up. It was said that only the blood of his descendants would stop it. Zhang asked, the blood of the descendants? They saw the pink dome above the manor, and Lu Chong replied that he thought he just had to donate a couple drops of his blood. Then the path would become safe, and they could go inside. If it wasn't for this array, he fears, in so many years, humans or animals would have already peeked in here. The boy wanted to say that he didn't know, but Zhang interrupted him by talking about the core. He thought about the streams. Zhang thought about the fact that it was a blood array. Only the family members of the person who installed it could stop it. He can't break it by force. Zhang said that the cannonball was right above the roof. There on the wooden beam were magical symbols. Lu Chong slashed at his boyfriend and threw the blood forward. It went straight to the symbols. In the next instant, the array fell. The boy said he would be free now. Once inside, they saw a large number of plaques and a plate of incense. Kneeling on the cushion, Lu Chong bowed to his ancestors. Mo Yu asked Zhang that he wouldn't go. He replied that this thing belongs to Lu Chun's family. He is only here to help him. So as long as it's safe here, it doesn't matter if he's inside or outside. The boy went back to his teacher. Zhang told him that the world was often unfair to them. Then he asked him to go, showing the scroll to the teacher. Lu Chong said that these were the Confucius writings left by his ancestors. Mo Yu looked at him in surprise. Taking the scroll, Zhang thought about the fact that it is very old, but it seems to have been treated with a special method that protects it from the ravages of time. It claims to be a disciple's item to me, but think, think, can take a look at what was written by Confucius. Upon opening it, the scroll began to glow. Zhang thought about the fact that this is the great wisdom of Confucius. These words contain his spirit and perception of the world. It will definitely help to improve the reader's mental power. But people in the distance saw the type of peddling the residents. One of them said that it looked like those had already gotten to it. The prince said that this Grandmaster Zhang Huang's teacher must have given him something as an amulet. Therefore, they must act quickly and for sure. Commander Liang said that they must not leave him a chance. Otherwise, if they had a second to send a distress signal or something like that, it would be incredibly difficult for them to do anything. The prince said more importantly, in writing should be in their possession. Liang Qingming bowed, telling his highness not to worry. The prince ordered action. Lu Chang wanted to ask what was wrong with the teacher, but Mo Yu said not to worry. It's always like this with him. When he reads, the world around him simply ceases to exist. But then they noticed that someone was attacking them. They were both taken aback. The commander with the sword was heading toward Zhang Huan. The next instant blood spurted, before Zhang's eyes flew. Mo Yu looked at all of this fearfully. 